They're both fantastic. I would say leaf blower because it's a little cleaner. The power washer is awesome and it lends itself to my OCD in a very real way. But you've <laughs> got to like put the hose on it and sometimes it leaks. Yep. And kind of if you really do it well, yeah. you will end up soaked using a power washer. Soaked and dirty. Yeah, I agree, man. Leaf blower is more efficient for sure. Um, but when you've really successfully power washed something, you can stand back and just yeah. revel in all the glory. But it is a pain to get to get there. You you got multiple up, right? hoses. Yeah. yeah, multiple hoses. You've got water everywhere. There's no, it's never like fully clean. But yeah. I have to say, when I see a power washer on the streets of New York, I get so excited because oh, New York awesome. is dirty. Yeah, yeah. So anybody that takes the time to power wash the block, I bow down to you. That is true. And and the thing about the power washers is it really does like we should have a power we should have a power washer and a steals and deals. We got to get to. We should market. actually. Well, you know what? Um, I have some Spring. I have some uh, inroads to the shop commerce team, so yeah. I will I'll recommend. You know a guy. Yes, power washing. Uh, well, we're gonna come back with a few more teases for next week, guys. But we got to take a quick. Today is getting you ready for the holiday season. From how to get your orders on time. The race to prepare for a holiday shipping season like no other. To traveling shortcuts and safety essentials. What you need to know every morning on Today. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're gonna do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. Is it easier to pass a bipartisan bill right now than it is to pass a Democrats-only bill? This supply chain issue has been a problem for months. Do you concur that this is going to get worse before it gets better? Are you concerned about the direction of your party? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Cooking up a storm with Al Roker, a Thanksgiving feast and a podcast. Listen now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Well, guys, uh, this is one of the monumental weeks at the today show with the halloween show coming and we are off to the holiday races it's it's on it's official it's official no one does the holidays like the today show i will say from start to finish and this is the start if, if there's no way around it halloween's the first big one we got a big month in november of thanksgiving we're already talking about taping the christmas stuff and getting some christmas some christmas content in there and then, of course, there's the shopping. I mean, nothing says Christmas like shopping. No, and this is now the time of year where Debbie Kosofsky switches from Halloween to uh, right. Thanksgiving. Oh. Ah. <laughs> and I will say, breaking Thanksgiving news, I know everyone's worried about Thanksgiving and the Today Show Plaza. We got the okay this morning. Let me did you see Evan's note. We yep. can have all of our giant, the big giant blowout on the plaza with, you know, dozens and dozens of chefs. And we're, we got the okay to do it. So we're excited about that. Yep. And we always have the Thanksgiving Day Parade down at Macy's. So <sighs> we're excited for that. With lots of good stuff coming up. I feel like we're turning the corner, guys. I hope. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. I think Knock so. Knock on wood. Uh, have a good week, everybody.
Hello and welcome to Football Fright in America. I'm Mike Tirico with live coverage of a special Super Bowl size celebration taking place right now over in Stadium 1A. Football fans from coast to coast have come together to honor one of America's favorite pastimes. While the crowd is cheering for their own home teams, they're united in their love of the game. Let's check in with some fans. Yes! Yes! Oh, yeah! It's football, baby. It's football. I love football so much. What's not to love? <laughs> Beer, fans, fun. I think the thing that brings us all together is rooting against uh, a common enemy. You know, every city, there's a rivalry. I think people's favorite teams say a lot about them, so it's almost an extension of yourself. Who that say they're going to beat them Saints? Who that? Who that? Go Ravens! <laughs> My dad took me to see the Washington team play Buffalo. There's a guy named Doug Williams who's under center for Washington. That was it. I was so. My dad always watched football, and I remember watching with him. He rooted for the Cowboys. Don't tell my husband, because now we're Eagles! E-A-G-L-E-S, Eagles! Ever since we were kids, my parents were always glued to football. It didn't matter who was playing, we were in. But then I discovered the New Orleans Saints, and I realized that there was magic. I don't really know the rules that well, but I know one rule is eat, eat too much. My favorite memory of Super Bowl Sunday is Mr. Roker's house because he has a huge spread. It doesn't matter who's playing. You pick a team and you scream for them. I love the food. I love all the, I love people getting a little nuts. I don't mind a nacho. It's all good. It's all the best of America, like all rolled into one. It gets no better than football. Yeah. The energy out there is electric. Cheers are echoing all across the stadium. So let's get this party started with the sound of Sunday Night Football on NBC. It's the song we wait all day for. Here's country superstar Carrie Underwood. Carrie, what a way to kick things off. Arriving to the stadium now, the league's favorite dynamic duo, Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski. Brady, of course, the most decorated quarterback in history. 20 seasons with the Patriots, two with the Bucks, and seven Super Bowl wins. The Brady-Gronk romance, as legendary as their teamwork on the field. Gronk even came out of retirement to join Brady in Tampa, bringing the Lombardi Trophy back to the Bay. Man, these two play hard and party harder you may remember their Super Bowl celebration made a lot of waves it's the man with smooth moves both on and off the field let's go Rob let's go let's go baby let's go hey let's go bro bring out the goat where's the goat living legend let's go the goat himself Tom Brady let's go let's go hey Giselle TB, throw me one of those. No, not that one, man. You remember what happened the last time? <laughs> yeah, 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 that one, that one. Come on, let's go. Oh, there you go. Oh. Hey. Yeah. yeah! Let's go! Let's go! Bronx Smash! Yeah, baby. Yeah, that baby. victory was a tough loss for Kansas City. And their star quarterback, Patrick Mahomes. But do not count the Chiefs out of the big game this season. Mahomes is already living up to his reputation as a gunslinger with an incredible arm. In his three years as a starter, he's played in two Super Bowls and won one. I love you, Patrick Mahomes! His meteoric rise is inspiring legions of young fans across the country. Entering the stadium now, the pride of Kansas City, Patrick Mahomes! <laughs> Like the boy we just saw. What do you want to say to them? All, all 
I can say, Britt, is we're going to work hard. That's all you can do. And that's my message to all the kids out there, especially that adorable little boy that we just saw there. You work hard. You can do anything. You can even, you can even make it to the Super Bowl. And to my number one fan out there, this one's for you, kid. Classy guy, that Mahomes. The one show you don't want to miss, the Super Bowl halftime. The most spectacular live performance of the year. Legends like Beyonce, Prince, and Gaga have brought down the house. The 2020 honors went to The Weeknd, who lit up the stadium with blinding lights. what makes the Super Bowl must-see TV. All eyes are on halftime performances for the spectacle, the stunts, the star power. You remember when Bruno Mars headlined? 115 million people tuned in to watch him get down on the gridiron in a halftime show that was a runaway success. with the moves and now one of the most iconic cheer teams not just in football but in all of sports now taking the field please welcome the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders whether or not you're a Cowboys fan get ready to root for the white and blue Super Bowl is more than just a game, as you know. It's an event. You come for the football, and you stay for the commercials. They make us laugh, they make us cry. And the best ones stick with us long after the game ends. Hey, Al, just watching the game with Hoda. Me too, I'm at a bar, having a beer. What's up? What's up? Hey, why don't you guys come down to Riley? See you soon. Hey, barkeep. Another round. What's up? What's up? Another bud. Can we take this to tail three? What's up? What's, What's up? up? Enjoy, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. Craig. What's up? What's up? Watch the game. Cheers. What's up? Yes. Thank you, NFL. These are the real Thank championship you. rings. I've got seven of them. I got Gronk four. That's right. That's I'll be crazy. sending two back. <laughs> Gronk, no smash rings. <laughs> I 
mean, that is incredible. And can yeah. we talk about the cheerleaders? You guys, oh my I'm gosh. sorry, wow. but oh, that was a there. legit How long did you guys rehearse? Well, we that went all the way to Dallas, met these wonderful women oh. who taught us, and were so patient and, and kind. Can we so just say you. they were patient, and that is their real touchdown cheer. That was yes, real. Impressive. Yes. Yeah. Bruno oh, Mars oh, and your oh, back. Bruno, no, oh. Chanel. Game ball, game ball. Yeah, game ball. Game ball. Game ball. One of our backup dancers was my first interview on Weekend Today. Oh He's like, he was like, what, 11 at the time? Wow. And, and is, so then we turned around, we were like, wait a minute. Wait, so do you just practice for five minutes? Is that what it goes uh, through? Or do you, you know what I do really? in my sleep? Like I kind of. What are you yeah. saying while you're dancing? Like I saw you, were you counting? I was like singing? saying the words. Oh, singing. Wow. Okay. Okay. She's out of her body. She's so good. And Carrie, you are amazing. Amazing. Yeah, I gotta be honest, I want to thank Savannah for these boots because my other ones were too small. And I'm constantly pulling You know what? Down. No, you got legs like Carrie. Life. But you. anyway, the real Carrie Underwood, uh, she, I did send her a picture of, of us and she said that we all look good. So oh, oh, good. 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 We know how much you love football. Yeah. And we know how much you love the Saints. Yeah. And we know how much you love <laughs> one player in particular. And he had a little message for you. What's up, Hoda? Drew Brees here. Ah! Fantastic rendition of the Carrie Underwood yes. Sunday Night Football yes. song. Fantastic. Loved it. We love you. Thank you so much for supporting us and the Saints. Do that, baby. Uh, I love it. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh. That was the cherry on top. That cherry on top. Guys, All right, oh my Mr. Gosh. Weekend. Wait, we didn't get to you. Did Come on. Can we Look talk about the guy. weekend? Go. Can I touch your hair? Sure, go right ahead. Woo. I had that exact same haircut back in the 70s. Actually, <laughs> even in the 70s, I was bald. <laughs> Sad, really. All right, guys, we are just getting started. We're going to have more of our football freight in America celebration right here in Stadium 1A coming up. But first, your local news. Yeah. Yeah. with just seconds left in the Super Bowl. It's true, and just like in the NFL, it takes a lot of practice. We actually started fittings and rehearsals weeks before this yep. big moment. So here is a sneak peek at this year's very special lineup. Go, Cowboys, go! What's up? How is that? <laughs> How can your mouth move like that? Behind the scenes fun fact, we have to have stock footage of a pretend football game and we're just mesmerized by the three plays that are running in an endless loop over and over. Only problem is we block Chanel's face. Thank you. <laughs> Yep. We feel great. Feeling really good. Feeling like a cheerleader. Feel Go Cowboys! Time to crank up the sound. I just want to say one thing. There are not enough spanks in the world for this. Oh my god. Yes! <laughs> oh wow, this doesn't look real. Giselle. I'll see you later, honey. Gronk says game time. Let's go. How fitting that Halloween is on the weekend this year. <laughs> Major delay. This is looking pretty good. So this is my first time even learning what I'm going to do. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. The fun is about to begin. Come on. We're ready. We're ready. 
Yeah. I'm like Sage Mom over here for Savannah and Jenna over on the side. Hold on, I'm like, oh, we, this is seriously the Today Show prom. Okay, I wear a size nine and a half, ten. These are size eight and a half, so I can't feel my feet. Ah. Go out! Yeah! 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 Chanel gets the game ball, deservedly so, every Halloween. We're basically just doing the warm up for Chanel. Facts. That's, that's what we do. Facts. Excuse me. Now we have to close the door. This is how the magic happens white boots, big hair, can't lose. My name is Brunel. <laughs> Look at that. Subtle, okay. Ready for the weekend? Hey, baby. Oh my God. Oh. That's, amazing. That's amazing. Oh my God. That's amazing. That goes down. I mean, so much fun. Wow. And so much fun. again, the NFL really hooked us up, and, and Patrick Mahomes did too. Yes. Yeah. 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 Big thanks for the football. And you guys traveled to Dallas. Oh, yeah. Oh, my yeah. Gosh. Can we just yeah. for a Can second? We, we want yeah. you to yeah. see yeah. this. Yeah. Come in. Friends here. We just, they've been Let's so go. wonderful to us. All of these oh, girls, God. they got a game on Sunday. Woo. They taught us how to dance, so. They made oh, us. Oh, boy. And they also yeah. made us these uniforms. Yes, no, they did. Oh, Super yeah. Hey, by the way, really quickly, there's a there's somebody here in a costume, Georgia from Virginia. Yeah. She's going through chemo. Mm. She she had to lose. She's lost her hair. She shaved. So she leaned in as Uncle Fester Woo! from the Adams family. Yeah. So God bless you. We love you. Love you, Georgia. Yeah. Who made this happen? Let's start telling our, our just the people who the wonderful ones are. Philip Heckman, our yeah. costume oh, Phil. designer, the entire wardrobe, hair, and makeup. Alex and Lyle, everybody. Yes, Ed Helbig and our design team, editor Scott Goldberg, Jennifer Patty, and the dancers from J. New Jersey. Yep. Of course, the NFL. I want to thank them again. Can't thank them enough. Our buddy Mike Tirico, oh, Victor yes. Cruz, and the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. Smith, who's cooking meatballs, yes. appreciate you. I love it. Uh, and a big thanks to the Plaza crowd. Yes. Yes. Happy Halloween. Oh, God, the Halloween yes. best. I love it. Oh. And our background dancers. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You guys. Show. Here's the thing. We're just getting started. We're going to keep the Halloween fun going in Woo. our third and fourth hours. All right. Have a good one. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Woo. 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 Yeah, maybe it's my microphone. Here, okay, lean in here. I got my All right, thank you, TV. You're the best. That's why you're the ghost. We've got an awesome crowd here this morning filled with dynamic costumes. So we brought in some special help. We got our Richard Cruises in the house helping us pick some of our favorites. Yeah. So please, as Carson just melted, mentioned, welcome to the field, former New York Giant Super Bowl champion, Victor Cruz. Well, Victor, does this bring back Oh, a lot of memories. First of all, the cold. It's starting to get football weather out here a little bit. Um, but definitely the memories, seeing you guys in these beautiful outfits and these uniforms Wait, is bringing me back. Is that your Super Bowl ring you're wearing? It is my ring. Oh. It is my ring. Oh, yeah. Check me out. Yeah. Check me out. We clear which one we on. That's the one right there. Yeah. So you traded in stadium for, for the studio. You're the host of uh, E! News Daily Pop. And this morning you've been hanging out with our crowd looking at some of these the, your favorite costumes. Yeah, I've been looking at some of my favorite costumes. And I want to go down the list of okay. our top three. Okay. Can I do that? Yeah, please. Uh, first and foremost, we got Jordan and Kelly here. We got... Um, um, they're from Marion, Indianapolis. They match in our theme of football. They got yeah. the hot dog, ketchup, and mustard. Obviously, they have the hot dog. What's the hot dog right there? His name is Indy. Yes. Indy. Her name is Indy. Yes. And um, talking about your costume, where did it come about, this whole thing? Uh, well, she was the inspiration, okay. obviously. <laughs> so we just built everything from her. It was kind of last minute, but I'd say it looks really great. It turned Incredible. out really well. Incredible. Amazing. Now, second, we have Felicia here. Yeah. Felicia. Felicia. Oh, whoa, whoa. She's not playing. Now, Felicia. Excuse me, Felicia. You're not a playboy, bunny. 
So She's Felicia, adorable. Felicia's from Richmond, Virginia. She handmade this entire outfit. Wow, wow. Felicia! She's great. She crushes it. She's, um, you know, keeping her warm in this time. That's amazing. It's incredible. Cute. And Good then job. last but not least, we have Jen. Jen! Jen. Jen's Jen. Make some noise for Jen. Yes! I almost broke into her castle because I thought there was a, a sleeping beauty in there. <laughs> It's just her and a dragon. The, the detail on this is incredible. Is. I love the fire sticks in front of the uh, yes. the castle there. So these are our three finalists for top costume. Yeah! yeah. Awesome! So Victor, who gets top costume? Okay, top costume for me is, um, now I didn't mention this before, Felicia is a retired firefighter, oh. retired as a captain. All right. Makes some noise for her. My dad was a fireman of 30 plus years, wow. also retired. So the winner of Top Costume is Felicia. Oh. Yay! Yay! Felicia! Can we see you? Yes. Hi. There we go. Hi, Felicia. Hi, Felicia. Felicia. <laughs> we got something very, very special. Listen, for where you. are you from? Listen, listen. But first, let's thank our runner ups to give them some gifts here. Yes. Oh, okay. Filled with some great gear. This is for the runner ups. Wow. Swag oh. bag. Nice. Yes. But there's there's a big there's a pretty big gift, right? Yeah. Yeah, but the Carson, winner what is the winner yeah. is going to the Super Bowl! Oh my gosh, take a look. The folks at JetBlue are giving you two round trip tickets to the big game. Plus, Hilton is providing a two night stay at the Hilton Anaheim to complete the whole package, Felicia. Yeah, when you were selling that costume. There you go. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely, and oh. hand sewing that costume, my goodness. But we also, we also have some more for the folks who were runners up as well. Right? Yeah, we're going to go. Oh, okay. Right. Right. <laughs> He's thinking about the big game Sunday. All right. All right. Everybody who came to the plaza, yes. everyone who came to the plaza, deck out, we want to thank you. Yes. Victor, of course, a big thank you. Thank well. you, Victor. Thank, thank, thank you, Victor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi there, you're starting your week with our favorite streaming channel, Today All Day. I'm Joe Fryer, in for Carson today, and welcome to Popstar Plus, where we cover the big news and discussions from the entertainment world. Coming up, Andrew Garfield has a buzzy new movie musical out, and he'll tell you all about it. Plus, we're celebrating a milestone anniversary for an iconic sports movie, Hoosiers. But we'll start with your Popstar headlines. First up, Adele, one of the world's best-selling artists, has been on a six-year hiatus, but now the 33-year-old is releasing new music and revealing new details to Oprah about her time out of the spotlight. The pre-tape concert special was interspersed with the singer's first television interview promoting her fourth album, 30. Winfrey asking Adele about her song lyrics, sadness, and self-care. Hello, it's me. In a much-anticipated concert and interview, Adele opening up to Oprah Winfrey about heartbreak, healing, and hope. So, do you call this, is this the divorce album? I think I'm divorcing myself on it. The Grammy winner revealing the moment she realized that she wanted to divorce her husband. When I admitted to my own friends who thought I was really happy, 
but actually I'm really unhappy and they all gasp. Sometimes it lasts in love, but sometimes it hurts instead. The singer saying she's now focused on her son and taking care of herself. I stopped drinking, that's one great way of, um, of really sort of getting to know yourself is being, you know, just drinking water and being sober as anything. Revealing that her father struggled with alcohol and that she worked to mend their relationship. The two listening to her music together for the first time before he died of cancer back in May. As I got older, I definitely understood that it was the alcohol. It wasn't a choice that he was necessarily making in himself that he didn't want to. But when you're little, me. You when you're little, that. you don't know. It. Focusing on self-care, leading Adele to a much talked about 100 pound weight loss. I'm not shocked or even phased by it because my body has been objectified my entire career. And when you were heavier, you were fine. I was and I was body positive then and I'm body positive now. But it's not my job to validate how people feel about their bodies. Ooh. But Adele knows her true fans will always be there for her. Thrilling the crowd in a stunning show at the Griffith Observatory and speaking directly to her nine-year-old son, Angelo. This is the first time that my son has ever seen me perform. It's the absolute honor of my life, baby, to have you here tonight. Listen, I'm wow. here. Yeah. I'm here for Adele. And I should mention, guys, there was another special moment there at the Griffith Observatory, which was beautiful, by the way. Adele helped a fan plan a surprise marriage proposal oh. to his girlfriend. He brought her to the observatory, blindfolded, unmasked her, then popped the question in front of the celebrity, the crowd, and the singer. Oh Can you imagine? Like, That's a lot of trust. Yeah. First of all, you think you're going to an Adele concert. That yeah. alone oh, look is at her. cool. Look at her face. It's it's good thing she said yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. She said yes. There you go. Wow. All right. And quickly, Downton Abbey, the Crawleys and their staff are headed back to the big screen. And we have an exclusive sneak peek at the first full trailer for the highly anticipated sequel, revealing Lady Grantham, played by Maggie Smith, no. might have a few no. more no. tricks up her sleeve. Years ago. Before you were born, I met a man, and now I've come into the possession of a villa in the south of France. What? They better be warned. The British are coming. No. <laughs> <laughs> Costumes, the drama, Downton Abbey, a new era, hits theaters March 18th, 2022. Lady have a boyfriend? Sounds Is that like what it. we're taking away Sounds kind of like dying it. at the end of no, the no, 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 I, guess, no. I guess she bounced back. Love yeah. saves, Al. <laughs> yeah. uh, to see the full trailer, <laughs> head, <laughs> head over to today.com. Oh, That's today's pop start news. After the break, our sit down with Andrew Garfield. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Is it easier to pass a bipartisan bill right now than it is to pass a Democrats-only bill? This supply chain issue has been a problem for months. Do you concur that this is going to get worse before it gets better? Are you concerned about the direction of your party? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Boom. Boom. That's your shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back to Pop Start Plus. In the new movie musical, Tick, Tick, Boom, Andrew Garfield plays the late composer and playwright Jonathan Larson. He was the creator of the legendary musical Rent, gaining him both a Tony and a Pulitzer. And Garfield says portraying Larson meant a lot to him. Here's our conversation. 
We are back with Tony winner and Oscar nominated star Andrew Garfield. He is using his many, <laughs> many talents, some newly discovered in the new film called Tick, Tick, Boom. It's, he's, he's starring as the creator of the musical Rent, Jonathan Larson, and it's based on the autobiographical musical of the same name. It follows John's life as a young theater composer in the 90s, struggling to finish his boundary breaking musical. Andrew, good morning, good, good morning. morning. Good morning. You know what I love about you? Yes. Like, so, okay, so here's the thing. You say you don't know how to sing, you don't know how to play piano. Lin-Manuel Miranda says, hey, I think you might be the right guy for my, my movie. And you say, how long is it going to be till we start filming? Because you're planning to learn those things. Well, yeah, like any good actor, I, I lie on my CV. <laughs> and he says, you know, I want you to do this. And I say... Well, how long? Yeah, how long do you need? And and he says, well, a year. And I'm like, yeah, I can probably do do that kind of stuff. And yeah, sure. Yeah, I can ride a horse. I can sing. I can play piano. I can yeah, do all. So this you stuff. learned it all. You learned how to play piano and sing in that year's time. I did, <laughs> and what a privilege that is. And 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 like you know how lucky I am that I got to do it through this amazing man's music, Jonathan Larson's music, and so so much undiscovered music as well. And there there are songs in this musical that people are going to be surprised by, even people who are big fans oh. of Jonathan Larson. So yes. Yeah, so. Of, of all people to say that to, Lin-Manuel yeah. Miranda, I mean, Broadway <laughs> legend, and you're, like, kind of riffing, sure, I can sing. Yeah. There was a moment I read that he came and watched one of your rehearsals mm -hmm. he singing. Snuck in. Because he, was mm -hmm. he thinking, like, all right, I got to make sure he actually can oh, sing. I yeah. might have to yeah. recast this role. Oh, of course, because he didn't he didn't want to be haunted by the ghost of, of Jonathan Larson for the rest of his <laughs> life, going, why did you let this person play me? Um, so, yeah, I was rehearsing with um, his one of his music, um, his music people, Kurt Crowley, who's an amazing um, person. And I was doing the first couple of phrases of the first number, 3090, and it was just me and Kurt alone in a room, or so I thought, but Lynn had kind of snuck, snuck in. in. Oh. And uh, the first I knew of that was that a, his shoe flew across my face. <laughs> and then he was looking at me so happy and excited. And he shouted at me. He was like, Andrew Garfield, you can sing. And I do oh. not have to recast you. <laughs> Is that what he said? <laughs> he yeah. was more relieved than you. Oh, totally, uh, yeah. Wow. So then we were kind of off to the races. I knew when the shoe flew, we were in a, in a good place. <laughs> Is that like a thing? To throw that, a shoe is, that is that like a good sign? It's a weird Lin-Manuel Miranda. I don't think it's a theater thing. I don't think oh. it's a musical theater. I think it's just a Lin-Manuel Lin Miranda thing. thing. Like when, when he's upset in a good way and angry at you for yes. being good. Yes, he'll yes. take his shoe off, he'll put ah. it somewhere, or he'll throw it. Or, yeah, it's well, real... it I like was, it. it. It's a spectacular performance, Thank and you. I thought what made it even more touching was you just, you dedicated this performance of you ha as you had others to your mom who passed away not too long ago. Yeah, and yeah. you just were telling me and Savannah, you love to talk about her. Yeah, I, if I, I only want to talk about her now because, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I think grief is all the unexpect, unexpressed love. I mm. think that's what it mm. feels. Oh, there she is. Yeah. Look yeah. at that gorgeous. She loved that green jumpsuit. That yeah. was like, she felt really powerful in that green jumpsuit. It was the kind of thing she wouldn't usually wear. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, so for me, it's, it, grief is unexpressed love. So, and I'm never going to be able to ex express fully the love that I have for my, for my mother, the gratitude I have. That, that I got given the best mother around. So uh, it's, it's, an, it's a never ending. And, and for John, you know, for me, it's like we all leave this life with an unfinished song, no matter, no matter how much of our song we get out. It's never going to be fully done. And, and it was the same for my mother. So I get, to, I get to continue singing her song for her in my life. And, um, and, and I get to do it through, through John's unfinished song as well uh, for all of us. So I, I just, it's, I'm, I feel very, very lucky. Well, other than Lin-Manuel Miranda, she was the, really the first yeah. one to discover you and yeah. your talent. And seeing that maybe drama and acting, yeah. maybe that was going to be your calling. Yeah, she saw right. that in she you. She did, even though she was destined, making me maybe destined for a life of poverty. <laughs> as, a, as an out-of-work actor, she, she, she was like, I'd rather my son be happy than... Um, than, than rich or than, um, you know, within the status quo, you know. I, yeah, I was, I, was, I was an athlete and then I gave that up and then I was studying academia and I kind of didn't connect with the mm -hmm. things that were being presented to me in this kind of provincial place that I was brought up in the south of England. And it was her that really saw that I was struggling and said, well, why don't you look at something creative? And mm -hmm. I was like, well, I tried clay molding and I wasn't very good and I tried painting and I wasn't very good I tried music and I was fine and yeah. then it was the last thing I tried was theater mm. and uh, and she she kind of hung in there with me um, and and was the first person to put me on that kind of path so I'm indebted to her forever. Wow. Well you know they're talking Oscar buzz for your performance yes, I don't they know if are. that embarrasses you or pleases you to hear. Yeah. 
both. Would you rather, <laughs> would you rather me take a shoe and throw it at you? Yes, yeah, 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 I would okay. much rather be knocked out okay. by your high heel right Wait, now. Wait, we do have to ask you about Spider-Man. Oh, yeah. Everybody's you know saying, have to. Everybody's saying there, you may be in it. There's a cameo. Why don't you just go ahead and confirm? Go ahead. <laughs> Just make it easy. I let's just, let's just end it right now. Why are, speculate? You guys are really good at your jobs, but I'm better at mine. <laughs> I, um, no, I listen. I, I, I'm not in the film. I, I love Spider-Man. I always have. I was so happy to, to, to have played the part. And, and I'm so excited to see what they do with the third one, just like uh -huh. you guys are, to be uh, honest. Okay. No, that's not like a diplomatic answer. Yeah. Like, I really, really mean it. Like, I love Tom Holland. Yeah. I love John Watts. I love Emmy Pascal and Kevin Feige and what they've done with those movies and that character, because it's, you know, it's an important character to me. So I'm just really excited to see what happens in the third one, as you guys are, I can Andrew, see as well. well you done, are Andrew. A delight. Thank you Thanks, so Andrews. much, and congratulations yeah. on all your success. Thank you. Tick, Tick, Boom is in theaters now and on Netflix this Friday. Up next, a look back at one of Julia Stiles' most beloved movies with the actress herself. This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're gonna do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at seven on NBC News Now. Today is getting you ready for the holiday season. From how to get your orders on time. The race to prepare for a holiday shipping season like no other. To traveling shortcuts and safety essentials. What you need to know every morning on Today. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're gonna do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Cooking up a storm with Al Roker, a Thanksgiving feast and a podcast. Listen now. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. High forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Didn't fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Pop Start Plus. 20 years ago, Julia Stiles starred as Sarah Johnson in Save the Last Dance. And for our flashback series, she shared what she remembers about filming after all these years and dance moves later. Yeah, I remember the montage of him teaching Sarah to dance in the studio and they're like bobbing, he's teaching her about rhythm and they're bobbing their heads. Oh, I know. Check, check, check. That's it. Oh, that's yeah. Yeah, it's the same beat, it up, right? And I'm going to pat myself on the back that it was hard for me to pretend to not have rhythm. I can say that because I'm terrible at ballet. The only thing that I brought to the table was that I could do the hip hop stuff. Uh, so yeah, but it became like a comedic almost. Hi, I'm Julia Stiles, and I'm flashing back to Save the Last Dance. How would I describe the character Sarah in Save the Last Dance? She has ex experienced a trauma. Her mother dies in the beginning of the movie. And she hasn't quite, she, she's like unsettled um, with the move to her father's house. And I think starts off very un unsure of herself, very, um, insecure in many ways. Um, but over the course of the movie learns, with the help of um, Sean Patrick Thomas's character, she, she finds her sense of self-worth and confidence. And um, yeah, she's a, she's, in a, she's a fish out of water in her new school. She learns to adapt to her new environment. Oh, he's amazing. He's such a lovely 
human being, such a gentleman. And we really relied on each other in the making of that film because, you know, when you're the when you're unknown, pretty much, and you become the lead in a studio movie that where they're spending a lot of money, the pressure is on. Even if it's not spoken, you know that it's there. And the two of us together, I think, were really a nice team. And he, he's, I think, as I remember correctly, I know he's older than I am, um, but it was more, I guess, noticeable back then when I was 19, and I think he was 30. Um, I could rely on him because he had a groundedness and a maturity and a life experience that was really nice. I, mean, I, I think I did, I did a screen test. I met Thomas Carter, the director, and he told me that he had seen 10 Things I Hate About You and the dance that I that Kat does on the pool table when she's drunk to Biggie Smalls. He saw that and he was like, oh, you have rhythm. So uh, then I screen tested. Um, with Sean and then another actor who was up for the role. And then they hired me. The absolute best thing about making that movie was the dance. I mean, the rehearsals and the dance training, that was like, I was like, sign me up, where do I start? Um, it was really challenging, really daunting because I'm not a professional dancer. Um, so there was a lot of playing catch up, but it was so fun and such an awesome opportunity to get to do that kind of like rigorous training and um, choreography rehearsals. We did over a month, I think, or maybe it was two months uh, before we started filming of uh, largely for me, the ballet, because I had to bust my butt to get in shape and also to, you know, catch up to the level that Sarah, or at least look like I could catch up, to, I could be at the level that Sarah was supposed to be at. Um, and I did ballet uh, as a kid and a teenager, but I had stopped. Um, so this was, this, that was the, the most rigorous part of the training. So we did, we did two months before we started filming. And then on the weekends, we would do the choreography rehearsals. Um, Fatima, who was the hip hop choreographer, when she would, we would rehearse the uh, audition scene and she was always, always refining the moves. So it was hard to keep up, <laughs> but. The beauty and sort of the heartbreak of the relationship is that Sarah doesn't really see what the big deal is, which is naive. And also like now I would call it white privilege, but sh she really likes him and doesn't see why the outside world has an issue with it. And, but inevitably, because other people do, it's gonna affect the relationship. I think um, even aside from the race issues, I think the sort of classic romance of their relationship is, is beautiful because it's like he believes in her and he lifts her up. He teaches her how to be a better dancer and, and a better, you know, his he imparts a lot of very mature, grown up, uh, ideas to her and, and cares for her, which I think is really, really beautiful. The things that they say in the movie, particularly Chenille, Carrie Washington's character, they when they talk about their experience and why they might be uncomfortable with the idea of a black guy and a white girl and also what it's like to be an African-American woman, um, I think is... I, I mean, it, op it, it, it opened my eyes to something that I hadn't really thought about before. And I think it's really cool that it's like snuck into a pop teen dance movie. You and Derek act like it don't bother people to see you two together. Like it don't hurt people to see. Carrie Washington was and is amazing. Absolutely, there's no doubt in my mind why she has the career that she has. She's an incredible actress and I could see it then. Um, she was really kind, really generous, you know, um, and I just remember being really impressed by her skill set. Like, she's just a really good actress, and she was so ready for that breakout part. She was like, you know, she was really, really ready to step into uh, that role and in, in, in that kind of a platform, like a, a movie that a lot of people are going to see. She was dying while I was dancing, and and I was mad at her and I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry.
I do remember that scene. I remember filming it. I remember we were on the Chicago River, so it was like an amazing landscape、um, and location. I, in terms of like crying and emotional scenes, I've learned so much now in the last twenty years about how to approach scenes like that. But I definitely would watch it and be really critical of myself. But it was, I mean, genuine and、um, real, I guess. I am really grateful to be have been a part of something that. Resonates with people, entertains people, even this many years later. I mean, that's what you hope for as an actor、um, and a storyteller. It's usually it's not what they're what people say. It's sort of their excitement and enthusiasm about it. Like that, that to me is the most flattering. I wasn't even thinking about like this anniversary coming up, and then was told, "Oh, it's the 20th anniversary of Say the Last Dance," and just now before this interview, I, was, I stopped like thinking about the. Whatever things on my to-do list that I I was like reflecting, going, you know, what would the 19-year-old Julia think of Julia now? 20 years—that is my entire adult life so far, from 19 until you know now. So,、um, lots lots to be grateful for. I feel much. I feel like I've learned so much about acting, about the movie industry, about myself in those 20 years. I've had so many great experiences. Like, I'm pretty grateful. Forty is looking all right. Forty is looking pretty good. Six, seven, eight. Step back, baby. Still out. Still. It's entertaining and it has the formula of dance movies, which I love. But it does have something deeper going on,、um, and it's a it's a pop teen dance movie. But it, underneath it is like we've snuck in some pretty major ideas, and it's a classic like. Not underdog, because she's not really the underdog, but like fish out of water, being triumphant and and rising to this challenge.、Um, but then also the the romance part of it is just really, you know, dance is very romantic, and and the way that the things that Sarah learns in in, in I don't know, it's just like it's a love story, it's a dance movie, and 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 it's got a happy ending, you know. I can't say this on the record yet. But welcome to Juilliard. <laughs> There's a part of me, like many years ago, that would have been too sort of cynical for that sort of thing, and now more than ever, I think I just want to watch something that's gonna make me feel good. <laughs> A、big thanks to Julia Stiles for spending some time with us. Up next, a great moment from our vault to mark a milestone for the Hoops Classic Hoosiers. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late-breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses, by the man who never changes. All right, it just did too. Cooking up a storm with Al Roker, a Thanksgiving feast and a podcast. Listen now. This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work, or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30, we give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Shop today with Joe Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd Cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. We're back for our series from the vault. We feature a moment from our today archive, and today it's all about Hoosiers, considered one of the greatest sports movies ever. It marked its 35th anniversary over the weekend. Starring Gene Hackman, it tells the story of a small town high school basketball team on a run to the Indiana State Championship. And Hackman stopped by today as the movie was released back in 1986. What is the mythology of the Milan 
story. Well, Milan was a, this tiny, tiny town, and, and they had very few uh, uh, in the high school, and they, they went all, all the way to the state championship. And so this inspired this, uh, this film, Hoosiers. And if uh, truth be known, uh, all the people who came up to us certainly uh, and said that they were there at the championship game, if they were actually there, then that stadium held about a half a million people. Right, right. Well, like I say, I was nowhere nearby, it, right? and I remember yeah. it vividly. Um, this was a cast of complete unknowns, virtually, after yourself, Dennis Hopper, Barbara Hershey, and I think one other uh, young fellow who was a professional actor. Everybody else were unknowns. They were all kids uh, uh, from the Indiana area, from Indianapolis area, who uh, had auditioned first to see if they could play basketball, and then afterwards to uh, uh, see if they could act a bit. And they did it that way so that they wouldn't have their heart broken. You know, they get a good actor and find out he couldn't play basketball. So they did it that They were all good basketball players. Now, you're a professional actor. I can just hear you saying, oh, wonderful. I'm starring with a whole bunch of uh, basketball players who've never even acted in a school play. Well, it, it, yeah, that was one's first thought. But uh, as it turned out, uh, we had some little acting classes. And they were terrific. They they just they caught on so quickly. You were the coach. You were I, the acting I, coach. I was yeah. I was the acting coach also to some degree. And um, we didn't do anything terribly serious. Just little kind of uh, uh, improvisations and uh, kind of real simple things. But they were really they really caught on. It was amazing. Well, did you find any maybe potential stars? Did A couple of boys promise? I think want to be actors now. Uh, they they got the uh, the bug. You know, they, they, it seemed kind of interesting. They, there was a lot of crowds and a lot of girls and that kind of thing. And so I, I think maybe a couple of them might be actors. <laughs> As we indicated before, it was kind of a long shot for you. Yeah, it was because it's not uh, an obvious uh, commercial film, uh, although I, I think it's going to turn out to be. But uh, I had never worked in the Midwest as an actor. I'd worked, uh, you know, in small television stations around the Midwest as a floor manager and that kind of thing. But um, it was a real challenge for me, and it was it was worth it certainly. Um, I, I was telling you before, the, the, a lady, an old lady, came up to me in the street one of the first days we were shooting, and and called me Gene Allen, and um, that was a, a name that I was known around my neighborhood because my dad's name was Gene and my cousin. You grew up across not far away in, in That's Danville, right, just 60 Illinois. That's mi 60 miles from Indianapolis. And uh, she said, I, I have pictures of your mother in my purse. And they were, she had pictures of a birthday party. Of, my mother was 12 years old. And uh, another one, of, my mother, when she was 18, I'd never seen those pictures. And it was just, it was so touching. It was worth everything just to, for that moment. The, the title, Hoosiers, um, is indefinable. I mean, there is no good legitimate no, definition a lot of, of the jokes. Word Hoosiers. But, but someone who, who coming from across the border in, in Illinois, did, did the Illini's have a definition for Hoosiers that you can <laughs> say on television? We called them a lot of things that I couldn't say on the air. Yeah. Um, but I was a kind of a half a Hoosier because I had gone to high school in East Chicago, Indiana uh, briefly, so I felt that I was uh, I was there legitimately. Yeah, in East Chicago, did you know the Milan story when you were? No, I didn't, no. Yeah. I was gone from there by Well, now. you were only half a Hoosier. <laughs> That's, That's right. That's why. <laughs> Who doesn't love a good underdog story? That does it for today's Pop Start Plus. Come back and see us tomorrow because Savannah has a fun chat with Lady A for her six minute marathon series. Thanks for watching. Michael, thanks for doing this. Good to see you, man. All right, you as well. Thanks for having me. We could spend most of this interview talking about New Jersey high school football, I think, but maybe we'll save that for a different time and focus on the save movie. Save that for <laughs> another time. We can save that for another time, man. <laughs> so let's talk about Without Remorse. I told you I just watched it today, and man, it comes out and grabs you from the word go and doesn't let go for the next couple of hours. Um, what does it feel like to be on the, the eve of this movie coming out that you've poured so much into? I, I'm excited. You know, honestly, uh, you know, uh, we finished shooting this movie right before the pandemic hit. So to go through post and edit, and, you know, and really, you know, put this movie together um, and not really sure where exactly, you know, when it was going to come out. So now that things are loosening back up and, uh, you know, getting ready to, 
you know, drop it on, you know, on Amazon Prime. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really, really excited about this one, man. So let's give people a little bit of the backstory without giving too much away about who John Kelly yeah. is. It's based off the Tom Clancy book, which right away people lean in and they want to see it. But this is sort of the origin character, origin story of a character they may not know as well. Yeah, John Kelly. So this is like, you know, arguably, you know, his, you know, second probably most famous character that 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 he's um you know created you know in his novels um and i've always been a fan of the tom clancy universe you know growing up playing rainbow six video games and really you know envisioning myself throughout these missions so when i had an opportunity to really like give uh you know john kelly a, a you know a fresh take and modernize the story you know that that kind of is more reflective of the world that that i live in today you know i just jumped at the opportunity um he kind of you know he goes through a personal tragedy you know, he's a you know, Navy SEAL, you know, he's a, a really loyal guy, you know, he believes in um, everything that he does. Um, and, and when he uh, gets wronged, you know, he, he wants some answers, you know, and, and this movie kind of takes place uh, of, of John looking for those answers, uh, no matter where they are. The video game part of this is crazy to me because you literally are living out the fantasy of every kid. You grow up playing a video game and now you get to go live it out. Exactly. And, that, and that's one of the things, you know, I mean, I love my job, man. And I love being able to, um, you know, to, to, you know, do my own stunts. You know, I mean, as a kid in the living room, when you're taking the couch cushions and, you know, you're, you know, you're jumping off of them and, you know, pretending, you know, playing make believe of whatever it is. Uh, these are the type of movies that I watched growing up. And so I finally be able to get into a place where I could do my own stunts and I can train for, um, you know, underwater sequences and, you know, and burning cars and, you know, tactical training and explosions and all that good stuff. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's a dream come true. You've called this the ideal movie for you, that when you saw this, you were like, I need to do this. Why do you say that exactly? Uh, because I'm, I'm a little bit of an adrenaline junkie. You know, <laughs> I, I, you know, looking up to, you know, you know, movie stars and action, action heroes like, you know, Tom Cruise and, uh, Michael J. White, you know, Wesley Snipes, Jackie Chan, you know, these guys, they always put the work into it. You know, they, they study, they train um, so they could, you know, be put in a position to actually do the stunts themselves. And I always wanted to do that. You know, I always wanted a, a vehicle or a movie that would allow me to actually do my own stuff. So, you know, for this one, I had a great stunt team. You know, we were very safe, uh, put a lot of time into uh, working out and training and getting prepared so they felt comfortable enough putting me in those positions. When you say you're doing your own stunts and you do in this movie, when I watch you walk up to a burning car, casually open the door and get in, <laughs> or plunge into a river, let's say, and hold your breath underwater for a while, that's you? That's Michael B. Jordan? Yeah, that's me, man. That's, uh, <laughs> you know, obviously, you know, I have a, like my stunt double, Clay, you know, it goes through things, makes sure everything's safe, you know, works out all the kinks, makes sure, you know, everything is, is awesome uh, and safe as, safe as can be. But no, man, like, you know, doing military, you know, you know, diving, you know, and, and, you know, going to dive tanks and, you know, spending hours and hours and hours under there becoming comfortable. Um, uh, the burning car is like, it's not too much you could really do to train for that. You know, I, I think that's the one I, I thought about the least. I was like, all right, cool. I gotta do what? Okay, cool. Let's just do it. Don't think about it. You know, the, you know, you put some, you know, flame retardant gel on you to make sure, you know, you can stay as cool as possible for as long as possible, but you still might walk away with a few less eyebrows and eyelashes. <laughs> and, uh, it, it gets pretty hot getting in and out of the car. Is there anybody in your life or on set saying, hey, you're one of the biggest movie stars in the world. We don't need you walking into a burning car right now. I mean, I, I all the producers, I think everybody was, was saying that, you know, <laughs> had my mom on speed dial, you know, so I think it was one of those <laughs> things where uh, I, I definitely had to persuade them at certain moments to, to, to let me do the things that they were like, ah, oh, you don't have to. I'm like, no, 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 I want to, let's do it. Let's, let's, let's figure it out. So uh, yeah, it was fun. You've said before that your mom gets tired of watching you die in movies over the course of your career, so she didn't want to see it in this one. Yeah, this one gave her a lot of anxiety, but um, but but it, it wasn't as nerve wracking, I'm sure, as some of the other characters that I played that uh, didn't make it out. You know, so so you know, as you get older, you know, you start to, you know, mature and have other roles that that you want to see them, you know, make it to the you know to the end of the credits. You know, so it's uh. It's, it, it was good. Speaking of the end of the credits, there's a moment after the credits 
mm -hmm. that leads me to believe this may be the beginning of something for you. Is that fair to say in this series? Yeah, yeah that's fair to say. I mean, I think we want to, you know, definitely stick around after the uh, after the credits. Um, but yeah, I think we're, you know, you know, we're alluding to the fact that we think we created a world that was, you know, interesting and cool and fun. And uh, we want to see where, you know, John Clark goes from here, you know, and uh, I don't think he's done yet, you know, hmm. so yeah, he has a lot more to do. And I'm really interested to see where he goes. Is it cool for you, Michael, to have reached the point in your career where you can live out some of these fantasies, to have grown up watching Matt Damon be Jason Bourne or Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible or all the stars you mentioned? And now there you are standing as the guy that some kid watching movies growing up is going to say, I want to be Michael B. Jordan in those movies. No, that's cool, man. That's, uh, that's, you know, yeah. I mean, I think it's safe to say that's something that, you know, I, 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 you know, I'm hopeful of, you know, and I want to continue to do movies like this. Um, they'll continue to continue to inspire, you know, I think representation is extremely important, you know, so to be able to, you know, do a, a wide, uh, you know, range of movies in different genres. And this is like my first one in this space. So to be able to, um, to be able to, you know, to do this type of movie is, 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 is exciting for me and it hopefully inspires uh, a lot of kids too. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it just love that. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Yeah, people may not realize that you're a producer of the movie Outlier Society, your production company, which has become this sort of force in Hollywood. Talk a little, if you can, Michael, about why you established that, what you wanted to accomplish with that, and how it's grown now to back these major projects like Remorse. Yeah, I think in the beginning, um, you know, starting my own production company kind of sparked from uh, my time on Friday Night Lights and Parenthood, you know, being around, you know, Peter Berg, you know, Sarah Arbery, you know, and uh, Jason Kadem and, and kind of, you know, Pete, Pete was like, you know, one day you're going to get tired of like uh, waiting for the phone to call. You know, you just got to gotta start owning things and creating your own IP and, and uh, ownership, ownership, ownership. And I was like, you know, and at that at young age, I just started, you know, thinking about creating things, you know, creating opportunities for others. You know, I've been extremely blessed to have a you know a fruitful career thus far and I want to um you know you got to pay that forward you know um so to be able to like create have a production company who um you know can shine a light on stories that maybe normally wouldn't wouldn't get told you know and also uh you know normalize you know um you know films and filmmakers and building around talent that um that maybe wouldn't have gotten a shot or opportunity you know I want to be the the tip, is, tip of the spear in that type of way and, and uh, create those opportunities for them. And you put riders in the deals where you have to have a certain level of inclusivity in terms of who works on the movie, which is an amazing piece of leverage that a handful of stars, I would think, could bring to a, a project. Yeah, the inclusion writer, you know, was inspired by Francis, Francis McDormand, you know, um, a few years ago during her famous, uh, you know, Oscar speech. And I was, you know, in the audience and I heard it and I was like, oh man, okay. 
there's something, you know, in writing that, that we can actually, you know, put into play. I was like, okay, cool. So, and that was something that, you know, we, we you know, my team started to build upon and, um, and we made that, you know, part of our, you know, our company policy. And that's something that, you know, just kind of, you know, tries to, you know, raise the accountability, you know, of, um, of our partners with Outlier Society. And, um, and, and, it's, and it's been very successful. It's been adopted uh, on every project thus far uh, since, since we put that in place. And uh, we'll continue to do so moving forward. So it's, uh, um, yeah, it's definitely something I'm proud of. And, you know, we're taking steps in the right direction. A long way to go, a lot of work to do. But, but I think if we continue to lead by example um, and, you know, one step, one foot in front of the other, you know, when it's all said and done, we'll look up and be like, okay, you know, we did something. Good for you for using your position for, for good that way. It's, it's funny to hear you talk about the people you looked up to growing up. And I'm thinking back to your youth, your childhood in Newark, New Jersey, and how you got from where you were in Newark to modeling and acting. What was, yeah. the, what was the leap for you? How did that young kid at 11 years old hop into modeling? And eventually that was sort of the road to show business. Uh, it was my mom, you know, my mom really uh, got me into it. She, uh, you know, randomly, uh, you know, at a doctor's appointment, the receptionist had two little boys who were, you know, you know, were in the industry, you know, uh, that were, were models at the time and was like, you know, you should bring your, you know, your sons with you too, you know, with, with me and, you know, crash this audition. I crashed this audition and ended up booking it got in trouble because I didn't have any <laughs> representation or whatever the case is. And then, uh, and, and honestly, you know, the rest was history, you know, um, had a backstage newspaper down at Penn station, randomly looked up a manager that had took out an ad, you know, for open calls, went in audition. She signed me that day and we were going out on a, uh, you know, go sees and auditions and stuff at you know, 10, 11, 12. And then it just one, you know, one small success to another, one step, you know, one stepping stone to to another one. I just kind of just kept going. Sometimes you just got to like walk your path, you know. You don't really know where it's going to end up, and then you start to learn, and you get to another level, and you you assess, and you learn, and you build, and your confidence, and you continue to grow, and you just figure it out. And it's just kind of always been like following my gut, my intuition. But I, you know, I credit my mom for sure. Uh, of getting me started and pushing me where I am. Was that even on your radar though, Michael, as a kid? I know you love sports, you're a good athlete. Was that something that you thought of like, oh, maybe someday I'll try actor? Or was it just that out of the blue? Out of the blue, no, it was no it was no thought at all, honestly. I was uh, enjoying, you know, sports and, and just hanging out with my friends and, you know, just living. You know, you're a kid at that point. You know, I mean, I guess some, some kids know exactly what they want to do at a young age, but I always loved, you know, um, you know, animation and movies and television shows, you know, I was always inter entertained by that. So um, it was just, I guess, it was a natural evolution. holiday season from how to get your orders on time the race to prepare for a holiday shipping season like no other to traveling shortcuts and safety essentials what you need to know every morning on today the meet the press chuck todd cast free wherever you get your podcasts is it easier to pass a bipartisan bill right now than it is to pass a democrats only bill this supply chain issue has been a problem for months. Do you concur that this is going to get worse before it gets better? Are you concerned about the direction of your party? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. 
Today is getting you ready for the holiday season. From how to get your orders on time. The race to prepare for a holiday shipping season like no other. To traveling shortcuts and safety essentials. What you need to know every morning on Today. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, I know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just made it For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Most people point to your performance on The Wire as sort of the breakthrough, playing Wallace. How big of that, how big a deal was that in your life, in your career? Did that give you the taste of, okay, I think I can do this for a living? Yeah, that was, uh, that was when I really fell in love with acting. That's when I was around, you know, um, a lot of veteran actors that, you know, like, you know, Idris Elba, you know, Dominic West, uh, J.D. Williams, Andre Royo, like those guys really um, sat me down and had conversations with me on set. And it was like, hey, you can you can this could be a career for you. You know, if you continue to, you know, if you if, you, if you're serious about it and you, you really you really keep uh, working at it. And uh, that was when I first started to, like, you know, really look at it differently than just, oh, I'm getting out of school and I could, you know, and I'm, and I'm, uh, you know, you know, or like, or just, you know, yeah, I just looked at it more as a business that type of way. And then from then, uh, falling in love with acting, you know, um, just was my thing. And then a crazy connection on All My Children where you actually replaced Chadwick Boseman, who had become one of your great friends. What was that experience like on All My Children? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's where the work ethic kicked in. You know, we would do so many episodes a week, you know, and um, just like we were just like, you know, we would crank them out. It, it was a lot. Uh, you know, you just always had to be prepared. So I think that's where I really got my acting school. You know, I think that was when I really kind of started to uh, uh, get my reps in, you know, I guess, as an actor. And, then, you know, in hindsight, you know, I was, you know, with Chadwick of it all, when we first kind of, you know, uh, first first met. Uh, uh, yeah, that's, that, that's a swap. Well. Yeah. yeah, I mean, when you think about what came for you guys later with one of the biggest movies in the history of Hollywood and Black Panther, to build that relationship coming off of All My Children, it's got to be crazy. What did he mean to you as a friend? No, I mean, you know, he's a he's a special person, you know, and it's you know it's it's a it's a tragic loss, you know, for all of us, you know, for me, um, you know, uh, our community, you know, um, yeah, it's it's uh, we're still dealing with it. You know, I think we're still processing, you know, I think it comes in waves, but, you know, his legacy that he left behind, the um, the impact that he's made on so many, you know, people around the world, you know, his family, um, he lives forever, you know. Um, you know, he, he has an incredible body of work to be able to, you know, that we can reminisce and, you know, and get a chance to, uh, you know, see pieces of him, but but he, but he's uh, he's still with us, you know what I mean? His, his uh, He's, he's still around, so you, he motivates and inspires me, so it's, it's cool. Were you guys, I interviewed Chadwick right in the middle of Black Panther mania. I think you guys had just come back from South Korea or something, and he just plopped down across and was like, oh, just on this whirlwind as the movie was catching fire. Could you guys believe in that moment, not just how big it was at the box office, but what a cultural force it had become around the world? I mean, I think we were, at that point, we were constantly taking it in from city to city, from country to country, you know, really be like, wow, okay, this is the reaction that we're getting from people. You know, this, the kids, the, um, you know, it's really all about the, the children and the kids, man, to see those look, the looks on their faces, um, you know, of admiration and just, you know, and, you know, and just happiness and oh, wow, like just to know that type of impact we're making um, was, uh, was really special. You know, a time in my life I'll never forget. So it was, it was a lot of fun. For what it's worth, my kids still say your line when you took the mask from the museum, you said, nah, I'm just feeling it. I just want this mask. <laughs> they still drop that around the house. <laughs> oh, man, that's cool. See, stuff like that is cool, man. That's, that's, uh, that's what it's all about. They just drop it in. Um, am I right in, in reading your story, Michael, that before Friday Night Lights, when you'd gone out to L.A., 
it was a bit of a struggle for you, even with the success of The Wire and the other things you've done, that you were wondering whether or not maybe this was the right thing and you even considered going back home to Jersey? Yeah, you know, nothing's guaranteed, right? So I, even with the success of, you know, The Wire and, you know, All My Children, all that good stuff, you know, there's a lot of talented actors out there. You know, there's a lot of that that, does, that don't, you know, for whatever reason, kind of make it over that hump, you know? Um, and that show, The Wire, kind of, in real time, it wasn't as popular as it was after right. the show was over. So, you know, doors started opening up, the right people were watching the shows that I was doing, you know, so slowly uh, things started to catch on. But at first, when I got out here, you know, it's, you know, life of an actor, you know, you're trying to, you know, you try to put a string of jobs together where you can like, you know, survive and stay out here long enough until you can actually figure out what your career is going to be or what projects you can actually, um, you know, uh, live off of, you know? So I think, you know, in the beginning, you know, I just knew there was a, I had a threshold, there was a moment, right? <laughs> but it's so crazy, like, you know, they say like, right when you get ready to quit, you know, that's the moment. If you just keep going a little bit further, you would you would have you would have made it, you know? So it's a little bit of that, you know, you had that doubt for whatever reason, you just continue to push through and, you know, you know, and here I am, so it's, uh, you know, obviously, I was doing what I was supposed to be doing. Yeah, not everybody who does well on a TV show keeps pushing, though. You know, sometimes that's the moment in time and that's the thing they did. But you kept going with Fruitvale and with Creed and all these films. At what point did you feel like you were a movie actor, really? Because you had success in television. When did you feel like, OK, now this is my thing. I'm in movies. You know, Fruitvale for me was the first time that, I, you know, that answered a lot of questions in, as far as like carrying a film, you know, in a movie. Um, but, you know, I still, you know, you know, it's, it's a, I'm a real chill guy, you know what I'm saying? So sometimes I gotta, you know, I gotta re remind myself, you know what I'm saying? Of, uh, you know, the, the blessings and accomplishments that, accomplishments that I've had thus far that, uh, but yeah, it's a, I don't believe my own hype. I don't drink the Kool-Aid, you know what I'm saying? I, I just, I just, I just do the work, man, and try to tell honest stories, and I'm, and I'm happy that you know I'm able to make an impact on people, and that people enjoy watching my work, you know, and uh, I continue to kind of have that attitude and point of view on it, you know. And part of that progression now is you're going to direct Creed Three, which is amazing. Your directorial debut. I know you're being directed as we speak by Denzel Washington. Is he giving you any pointers on how to do this? Yeah, everybody is, man. I'm, I'm, I'm. Uh, I'll be a fool not to listen to, you know. <laughs> You know, like the greats, you know, and, and Denzel has so many gems and wisdoms to to to, to give. So, um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm looking forward to telling the story and finally stepping behind the camera. Uh, I feel like I've been uh, in my head secretly, you know, observing from that from that type of uh, perspective for a long time and, you know, waiting for the right thing or the right opportunity, you know, the right story to be able to tell. And I, I can't think of a better one than than. Uh, and Adonis and Creed, so I'm really, I'm really excited about this. Is that going to be a tough thing to do, where you've got to see 360 degrees of the film, and then all of a sudden you got to grease up and get, can get in the ring? <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to be difficult. I mean, it's, 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 it's going to be challenging. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's. That's just what it is. Uh, but I look forward to it. You know, um, it, it's something that, you know, I'm as ready as I'm ever going to be. I don't think you're never fully ready for it, but I'm a I'm a jump in the deep end type of guy. So, you know, here we go. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're going to do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it's just 
a storm with Al Roker, a Thanksgiving feast and a podcast. Listen now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. You, it's funny to hear you say you are a chill guy and you don't get swept up in all the things that have come your way. So how do you react when something like people's sexiest man alive comes to you? I just smile, you? man. Hey, look, just <laughs> smile and enjoy it. <laughs> Trust me, I got enough people around me, my friends and family, who give me enough shit that you know. What I mean? it's, it's, it's you know they 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 keep me they keep me they keep me pretty grounded and humble. But it's, it's it's all fun, you know. It's a big target. Imagine all the group chats, all your oh. friends, and everything that you do is because the sexiest way to live. It's like yeah, okay, it's annoying after a while. But I imagine, imagine on one hand it's an honor, on the other hand you go, oh, I'm gonna hear from everybody. Exactly. I mean, my, my mom and my aunties, you know, and all my, you know, all my, like, you know, all the women in my family, it's, 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 it's gold. You know, everybody else, it's a target. You, it does seem to me, though, over the last few years, you've become more comfortable with the, the celebrity thing. Is that fair to say? You've been more open with your private life and you're in love right now and you've been very open about that. Are you, is it easier for you to kind of let that wall down a little bit? You mean, I mean, I think, you know, just understanding the industry and all the, the things that come along with it, you know, it's all, it's, it's not all glitter and gold and, um, and, and it's, uh, you know, it, it's a, it's a transition, you know, but still very private, you know, still, you know, keep a lot of, you know, stuff to myself, you know, but there's certain areas of my life that, you know, I chose to, to, to put out there, uh, more of a way to be like, all right, it's there. Now it's, we go all move on, right? And just continue to like, yeah, like we can we can move on. Like it doesn't have to be the, the 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 private eye trying to dig and find out what's the, every little thing. So, um, but yeah, I'm happy, man. And, and it's uh, and I, and I I probably always will, you know, keep keep that part of my life, you know, what I'm saying to myself. But but it's uh, you know, nobody's hiding anything. Well, that's interesting that you say that because a lot of people notice that with Lori, you've kind of gone on Instagram. And it sounds like it's a bit of a strategy to demystify it. No, not a strategy, man. It's just more or less like this is what it is. And all right, let's keep it moving. Like it's, it's, uh, that's, that, I mean, that's really it, man. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your time. Um, the film appreciate Without it. Remorse is incredible. We didn't get around to the rivalry with Behringer in Newark, but we're, we'll hit that next time. We'll, we'll get that on the next one. All right. Michael, thanks for the time. Congrats. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. All right. All right, see ya. Welcome to Today All Day. All Day? Today All Day. All Day. This is a long oh, way of asking, yeah, who's your okay. favorite character you've ever oh, played? Right. The unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> what is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things? Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. Yeah. I don't want the wrath of Luna. <laughs> when I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold cut. My buddy cow cooking with me. Dad's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today, with simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit <laughs> now. How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You've received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do the weather out. <laughs> okay. All you gotta do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, wow. Ambush Makeovers. Okay. Look at it. Doesn't it doesn't look, look so good. No, it doesn't look good. Will you okay. judge this in a cook-off? I yes. will, and okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day. Welcome to Today, All Day. Live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, this is the third hour of today. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the third hour of today for a Monday, November 15th. So excited to have our good buddy, Maria Schreiber. Not just today, not just tomorrow, all, all week. week. Yes. 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 
Yes. I got to get in shape for the good whole morning. week. Yeah, <laughs> getting up early again. Yeah, it's so exciting. Oh, that good stuff. It's the first time I've seen Maria in, in a year and a half. I wasn't here the last time she was here. Mm -hmm. I told her backstage. I was like, the pandemic's been very good oh, to you. she's hashtag goals. That's yeah. what I, I mean, you like, you look more refreshed than you did before the global I, pandemic. I, I am more refreshed because I've been go. working. Well, until until Friday. Friday. Ha, and, a grand, do it. and a grandbaby will do that That's for you, too. That's for sure. I love it. Well, we have a good show on this, your first day. You're not first day, but first day of the week. Got it. We were just talking about the fact that Ernie Hudson is here, actor. He's live in the studio. He's reprising his iconic Ghostbusters role in the latest version of the franchise. It is so good. And we're going to catch up. He'll talk about what it's like to revisit his character and work once again with Bill Murray. Nearly 40 oh. years after the original movie, there was a huge crowd out Hard on the plaza believe. this morning. I know. All they found up. out he was here. They were all in their Ghostbusters uniforms. I'm telling you. And then now there'll be a whole, whole new group of people <laughs> who will Can't love wait. it. And then after we catch up with Ernie, it's Monday. That means it's Make Ahead Monday. And here's the thing. We've got some food royalty in Studio 1A. He's going to talk about some food that never goes stale. Best-selling cookbook author Mark Bateman is Bateman. here. Bateman here in 1A to show us how to turn that leftover bread into not one, but two dishes that your family will love, including some cookies. It's Bateman bread. Bitman bread. 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 I almost sat on Bitman bread in there oh. because it was in the chair where I oh, had my no. bag and I was like, oh, this I don't is bread think you here. Need to hatch it. <laughs> that special bread. <laughs> we almost lost the Bitman bread. bread, but. All right. Well, before we get to the headlines, sometimes we know Monday mornings can be a bit of a challenge to get motivated. But Maria, you posted this great quote of yours on Instagram. We were all talking about it this morning. Do you want to uh, share it with us? Okay, I can right, share it with you. It says, go yeah. have yourself one hell of a week. We always talk about, like, mm -hmm. oh, I had a hell of a week in a bad right. way. It says, go forward with that intention have conviction about it make it so life is fragile don't waste a week doubting yourself guilting yourself or playing small mm. move forward with your head high and your shoulders back let's go let's, wow. let's, let's go. go let's go you know I, happy I, we, monday we like to go forward but i want to go back just for a little bit okay i have a picture uh, uh -oh. when I first met Maria, oh, wow. this was the first year of wow. Wow. Sunday Today, 34 wow. years ago, 1987. Uh -huh. Maria and Bill McAtee were the anchors. Garrick Utley was the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Boyd Matson were the, were the anchors. Uh, Garrick Utley was the newsreader. Bill McAtee did sports. That's a and, team. And I did weather. Look at that. And that I haven't seen this picture. Yeah. I haven't seen that in a really long time. That was the beginning of Sunday Today, That's right? right. Mm -hmm. That's right. What a ride that Here was. Here we are. We so, should mention that. So we're survivors. Quote. We're survivors. Yes, <laughs> the quote was from your newsletter, right? The yeah, the, I put up on Instagram every Sunday. I have a Sunday paper, yes. but on Sunday nights, I put up these Sunday evening reminders, which have just become kind of people wait for them because I didn't know that everybody was having a difficult time with Sunday evenings. My son was like, duh. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. So, but anyway, leave it to so, your kids. We'll leave it to <laughs> what we need. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Thank so you. good having you here, Maria. Thanks Thank for that. Uh, let's get to the headlines this morning. Starting, uh, we will take a look at a friend of mine uh -huh. who arrived at our studio this weekend. The 30 Rock Tree. He is back. <laughs> 79 foot How Norway you know spruce. How do you know it's a heat? Yeah. Because he has told Thank me. Thank you. Oh, Thank told you, me. Craig. Yes, he I told me. She stood he, out there. I walked he by he her this morning. Me. She is big he and majestic. And her shoulders are back. Yeah. He her called head in. Is high. We have spoken She looks with gorgeous <laughs> and she is strong and <laughs> men are trying to hold her up. <laughs> I, I, that's what I saw when I walked by this morning. Did you now? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, now, okay. So now we've got the now first controversy is, of, of the tree season. Week. It's going to be a hell of a week. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can see week. it now. And is, it, anyway, uh, it made the, <laughs> the trip all the way from Maryland, now getting all decked out in preparation for the big night. Tree will be decorated with more than 50,000 lights and a star covered in 3 million crystals. A woman, for sure. This is, no, this no, is a live picture. Why would you say yes. that? Is this a live picture? This is keep live going, picture. keep going, Craig. This is live? No. Oh, wow. Everybody likes wearing crystals and getting glammed up. <laughs> anyway, the annual tree lighting is Wednesday, December 1st. They're on the top floor there. Uh, and you will catch it live right here on N. He, here's the thing. The tree, obviously, of course, is is the is the spectacle. It's, mm -hmm. the, it's the show. But the workers who get that thing oh, yeah. together, yeah. 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 the wow. speed with which they moved That's over right. the weekend to get Wire the scaffolding that thing up. up and, so we're looking That's forward amazing. to getting that, uh, that tree um, decked out, whatever it is. Uh, meanwhile, this morning, a new push for vaccine boosters for all adults as a number of states are seeing an increase in COVID cases, sparking concern over a possible fifth wave of the virus. The three states, California, Colorado and New Mexico, are, are now allowing the extra shots for all adults 
And they're doing that even though federal health officials recommend limiting boosters to those considered most at risk. Meantime, with children newly eligible for the vaccine, more than one million of them, more than a million kids have already received at least one dose. Wow. Also this morning, there are some new concerns about holiday travel. AAA predicts 0.2 million people will be flying over the extended Thanksgiving holiday weekend. Whoa. Airlines say they are aggressively staffing up to oh, avoid a potential. Two. What yeah. did I say? 2.2 million. Okay, 4.2 million. <laughs> <laughs> With Southwest offering its staff frequent flyer miles, I love Al, worth up to $1,400 if they work over the holidays. Wow. And American Airlines is offering employees $1,000 bonuses for perfect attendance over the next seven weeks. Wow. And I flew last night. How was it? Well, I flew in the morning, actually, and I was saying to Al this morning before he corrected me that, uh, <laughs> that the well, lights gonna, were out. The lights were, me. it's going to be a stay in the middle. Yeah, yes. I am. Right here. Stay in my lane. Right That's good. But they, I got on an early morning flight, and they kept the lights off the entire entire flight, That's which so I thought strange. was so unusual. And then somebody said it was to keep people calm mm. so that there was no disruptions. I don't know if that's true. Wow. But and I mean, they need to pay people because the last thing they want is to have a domino effect where people are getting to their flights and can't get them sure. because of personnel issues. Oh, it was crowded issues. in the airport. Wow. 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 People are making up for lost time. Let's get to that other story that's got a lot of royal watchers a bit anxious. It happened over the weekend. Queen Elizabeth withdrawing at the last minute from a Remembrance Day ceremony. It's a ceremony that she rarely misses. Buckingham Palace says that the queen has a sprained back now. It's been now nearly a month since the queen's been seen in public. And here with more on what this might mean is NBC News royal commentator Daisy McGandrew. Daisy, good morning to you. Good morning to you guys. Well, just to put it in perspective, this was only the seventh time the queen missed the ceremony over the course of her 69-year reign. The other few times she was pregnant or overseas. So she's been dealing with different health issues since the end of October. Is there any update on how she's, she's doing? Well, you're absolutely right that this is not an event that the Queen would want to miss under any circumstances. As you said, she's only missed six before, all for very, very valid reasons. The update is that the palace are reassuring us that the sprained back that caused her to pull out yesterday is unrelated to the other issues. And I think we can take that as read because she pulled out so close to when she was meant to be just down the road at the Foreign Office. It would seem that the pain that she was uh, getting in her back simply wouldn't have stood up to a car journey here, walking up lots of steps. It's a long walk to the balcony and then standing in the cold for some time. So she stayed in Windsor where we know she's comfortable. She's got her beloved horses, her puppies, her budgerigars, which I know give her a lot of pleasure, her jigsaw puzzles, but she is still doing light duties. So I think we'll see her on some kind of Zoom in the next few days, really just to reassure the rest of us that she is okay. That would be really great. So Remembrance Day seems like it's very much like our Veterans Day here. What was the mood like at the ceremony and, and in the area without the Queen being there? Yeah, you're right. It absolutely is like your Veterans Day. It's when the nation comes together to remember the fallen war dead. And of course, the Queen being the head of the armed forces and having been married uh, to uh, a man who saw active service, had a son, Prince Andrew, who saw active service in the Falklands, a grandson, Prince Harry, who saw active service in Afghanistan. And in fact, the Queen is the only living head of state who herself was a veteran. When she was 13, living at Buckingham Palace, the war started. It was heavily bombed in 1940. By the time the war ended, she was actually serving herself as a, as a female auxiliary member. The mood uh, was obviously very sad that she was there. And it was interesting, when there was a rendition of God Save the Queen, it definitely seemed louder, mm. more urgent, more emotional than it has done in previous years. I did not know that about yeah, him either. Wow. Veteran. The That's history good. this woman has seen is amazing. It's incredible. We are wishing wow. her well this morning. Daisy Gandu. Thank you, Daisy. All right. Well, coming up, we're going to kick off our week-long cost of care series mm -hmm. that focuses on caregiving concerns. This morning, a look at latchkey kids and why they are on the rise these days. And then, how a group of men going through tough times, finding comfort and healing in a very unlikely but peaceful place. Third hour of today, we'll be right back. We are back and we're so excited to kick off a special new series and it's all about the cost of care, focusing 
on caregiving concerns. This is so important. This morning, we're taking a look at a new generation of latchkey kids, school-age children left home alone to care for themselves while their parents work. NBC's Kristen Dalgan joins us now with more. Kristen, good morning. Hey, good morning. Yeah, this is something that we all understand during the pandemic. Many families it upended their child care as they knew it. Schools closed. As a result, so did the after-school programs. Many families were nervous about bringing babysitters into their homes because of COVID risks. And then there is the cost. We met two families who say they're making the most of a challenging situation. Every day after school, 12-year-old Grace walks home, goes into her empty house, locks the door behind her, and pulls up her mom on FaceTime. How was your math test? It was actually pretty easy. A thousand miles away in Florida. Everything okay? It's much the yeah. same. Siblings Jayla, Jeremiah, and Jace saying hi to their mom, Brittany. Love you before diving into after-school snacks. I'm making the popcorn. They're a new generation of latchkey kids, home alone and serving as their own caretakers while their parents work. Latchkey kids. The term latchkey kids entered the national vernacular in the 1980s. Working moms became the new normal. But by 2011, thanks to an explosion in after-school care programs, the number of kids left home alone dropped dramatically by 40%. Then came the pandemic. Having, you know, 7.7 .7 million children in 2020 who don't have access to, um, to care and are left alone and unsupervised is certainly a concern. Child care experts say the pandemic made millions of children latchkey kids overnight, with scores of after-school programs shuttered and remaining programs raising prices and reducing available slots. Grace's parents had to return to in-person work early in the pandemic. With schools closed, the Rhode Island couple struggled with child care costs. Where I live, we're not finding a babysitter for less than $15 to $20 an hour. And they worried about a babysitter inadvertently bringing COVID into the home. In the case of Brittany, a single mom who asked that we not reveal her last name due to safety concerns, it's been difficult to find babysitters who can reliably work the hours she needs at a rate she can afford. On top of a full-time day job, she now works a second job several nights a week from 8 p.m. to midnight. Had you been looking for child care? Yeah, I've looked for child care, but it's really expensive. When you're a single parent, you have bills. The cost of living is not what you get paid. So trying to afford child care, it's crazy. Brittany's kids ages 11, 9, and 7 say they've learned to adapt to being home alone for the most part. So when your mom's gone at work, you guys sleep in the same room? Yes. And that makes you feel better? A little. And you do that because you guys are scared? No, I'm not, not scared. He's, he's like the one that will get scared. When she's not home, Brittany monitors them with the help of her phone and a series of cameras she installed throughout the house. Up in Rhode Island, Grace has learned to cook on a gas stove. It was really hard. I didn't know how to like turn like on the stove. It's easier now. I can cook quesadillas, grilled cheese. As an only child, she says she gets lonely, but she's grateful for the companionship of her dog. <laughs> in the vast majority of states, there are no laws in place dictating a specific age at which a child can be left home alone. In states like Florida, for example, where Brittany lives, it's up to a parent to determine when a child is ready. The moms say leaving kids home alone isn't a choice they wanted to make, but were forced to make. One more example of families making the best of difficult pandemic situations. I know as a mom, I have guilt about everything. Yeah. Do you have that mom guilt? In the beginning, I did. It was just, why do I have to put my kids through this? Am I a bad mom for this? And you don't want the judgment, but at the end of the day, you have to make the decisions that's best for your family. And this may just be the tip of the iceberg as more people return to work. The one stat that really floored me is that in many places, the cost of child care sure. is about the same as a community college education. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Mm -hmm. And so that's been before the pandemic, and now this is just accelerating. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the, what, both families made this difficult decision about leaving kids home alone. Moving forward, are they going to still make those decisions or different? They said it's working for them. You know, each family said that they felt confident that their kids were taking care of things after school. They felt like they were safe. Look, technology has changed things. Sure. 
when I was a latchkey kid, we were talking. Same here. Same here. And now there are cameras that the moms can sort of That's dip true. in and peek on what the kids are yeah. doing. There's FaceTime so they Tracking can have device conversations. Right. <laughs> right? Yeah. And so it's technology has made it a little easier, but it is such an individual. But you make a good point there. I think the definition of a latchkey kid, as a result of some of that technology you mentioned, the definition has changed dramatically. Yeah. If all of your kids have cell phones, yeah. you know. But, well, it's true. but bottom line, childcare is too expensive. Oh. Everywhere. Right. Everywhere. Right. No question yeah. about Kristen, thank great story. you. You bet. Good to see you in person. I know. Thank you, you guys. Have you too. met our friend Maria Schreiber? I know. It's nice to <laughs> see everyone. This is like a little reunion here. We're going way back with Elmo in the green room. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. right. <laughs> Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Boom. Boom. Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Is it easier to pass a bipartisan bill right now than it is to pass a Democrats-only bill? This supply chain issue has been a problem for months. Do you concur that this is going to get worse before it gets better? Are you concerned about the direction of your party? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is getting you ready for the holiday season. From how to get your orders on time. The race to prepare for a holiday shipping season like no other. To traveling shortcuts and safety essentials. What you need to know every morning on Today. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Is it easier to pass a bipartisan bill right now than it is to pass a Democrats-only bill? This supply chain issue has been a problem for months. Do you concur that this is going to get worse before it gets better? Are you concerned about the direction of your party? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Now this morning in our Brotherhood series, a story about men who share a bond, a bond they never really wanted, mm. cancer. But amid their battles and the physical and emotional toll that the disease itself takes, these men have found healing and empowerment in the unlikeliest of places. Take a look. It's a quiet fall morning in rural Virginia, and underneath the surface of this gentle river, there are trout to catch. Soon, a group of men arrive. They get their waders and boots on, rods and reels ready. For the next two days, trying to hook one of those elusive fish will be their mission. A distraction from the one thing they all have in common, living with cancer. I'm not thinking about cancer, crystal blue skies and the river and great people around you. It's just an emotional heal. The 14 men are here thanks to Real Recovery. It's an organization that hosts fly fishing retreats free of charge for men with all types and stages of the disease. Stan Golub co-founded the group in 2003 with fly fisherman Stu Brown, who was battling stage four brain cancer. We had four guys all from Stu's physician, all with brain cancer. And we taught them how to fish. We shed tears, we laughed. It was an incredible, miraculous experience for a first go around. Brown died later that year, but thanks to grants, donors, and volunteers, Real Recovery grew and has now held more than 300 retreats all across the country for men of any skill level. Like 46-year-old dad, Jamie Perfetto. In October 2019, I was diagnosed with multiple myeloma. I don't know how to fish, really. I'm back into fishing because my six-year-old son wants to fish, and I want to be with him to fish, so. <clears throat> 44-year-old Matthew Parker has found here an entirely new kind of support in his three-year fight against breast cancer. Having breast cancer as a dude, uh, it's rare, it's super rare. All my support groups are predominantly women. With this group, I have the male side, and we all share this common bond. After a morning on the river, the men take a break for what's called a courageous conversation where they are invited to open up about their personal battles or anything else they want to share. I never felt alone anymore. Sometimes, you know, we try to like hide it um, and having men around you, this is gonna be part of my life now. 
It's this part of the retreat that many participants like Garth Callahan say is life-changing. I'm 52 and I have incurable metastatic kidney cancer. I have about 10 tumors in my torso right now. Although there are 14 different stories, it's easier to share the burden. I'll tell you, honestly, I didn't, I didn't expect that. We have uh, literally saved lives. I mean, men have come suicidal with guns in their trunk and want to go fishing one more time. And we've turned them around. Another of the group's rituals, signing their fishing vest, as more than 3,700 men in this brotherhood have done. When you put this vest on, feel the strength and courage that flows through these names and through these men who've worn them before. Also on the vests is the group's motto, be well, fish on. And so they do, finding that, at least for today, it's the best treatment around. I love the nature, just experiencing life. With cancer, you just learn to take each moment, you know, and enjoy, enjoy this day. This is one of the first times, I think, in the last 10 years where I've woken up and really didn't have to worry about doctor's visits or chemo. It's a great day. And you know, the group has also uh, recently gone global as well. They, they, they have been holding retreats in Australia, New Zealand, with plans for Iceland next year. They say they want to go wherever there are men with cancer who want to fish and where they have willing volunteers to make it happen. You know, I've talked one on one with guys who've talked about prostate cancer, yeah. but the idea of a group yeah. to be able to sit there and share is uh, really to me, one of the most amazing ideas mm -hmm. I've ever Needed. heard. Community. Yeah. yeah. Community. It's good. Always helps. Mm -hmm. All right. Still ahead. Oh, no, that's you. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> that's all I'm right. not Roker. No, you are. But uh, who are you going to call? He's Ernie Hudson, and he is here talking about bringing back his iconic Ghostbuster character, Winston Zeddemore, in a brand new movie, and his other great TV show. Then later, entrepreneur and social media sensation, Gary Vee, live with his best advice for making it big in business and your personal life. Third Hour Today, I'll be right back. This isn't about spending going forward, this is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. Is it easier to pass a bipartisan bill right now than it is to pass a Democrats-only bill? This supply chain issue has been a problem for months. Do you concur that this is going to get worse before it gets better? Are you concerned about the direction of your party? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. I forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. This is fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker, a Thanksgiving feast and a podcast. Listen now. This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app.
morning, we cannot be more excited because we are catching up with the great Ernie Hudson. Ernie starred in the iconic Ghostbusters film as Winston Zeddemore, and now he's reprising his role in the new movie, Ghostbusters Afterlife. It follows a young girl named Phoebe who finds some strange equipment in her late grandfather's hideout. That's right. With the help of her teacher, played by Paul Rudd, and one of her classmates, they try testing some of that equipment out. Uh, we should probably get out of here. You're an adult. Yeah. And liable. You know what this means, right? Your grandfather was a Ghostbuster. Oh, yeah, uh, and so yeah, it yeah. begins. Yeah. Ernie Hudson, good to see you. Good well, see thank you. you. It's great to be here with you guys. I'm, yeah. uh, yeah, it's really a lot of fun. You know, I tell you, I, I saw the movie, Chanel saw it too. And besides being true to the original, it is a really emotional roller coaster, you know, besides all the other things that you come to expect. Was, was that really kind of important, uh, you know, for the, for the movie to go forward? Yeah, I think so. I think the fans have been so amazing. They've been there for almost 40 years, and they've wow. been loyal to it. They've turned their cars into ectomobiles. <laughs> so I'm glad the movie delivers, and I'm so proud of Jason uh, Reitman, who directed it and, um, you know, Wrote it, and it's, yeah, it's a wonderful film. So Jason, who you said directed, wrote it, is the son of Ivan Reitman, who directed the first one. Ivan produced the first that. Two, yeah. The first two, yeah. So was this a big uh, transition? What was that like for you to work with somebody you'd probably seen as a little boy? I remember Jason as six years old, running around wow. the set on the first movie. And in the second movie, he does a, a, a small part in the very beginning of it. But to see him now all grown up, and he's established his career, he's a wonderful director, and to take over the helm here, it's just, it's, it's I'm, I'm just honored to be a part of it. Well, speaking of kids, they're not kids anymore, but we had, you know, they're not little kids. Finn Wolf, uh, Wolfhard and McKenna Grace, two of the actors in Ghostbusters, were here with us here on the third hour today. They are a delight, by the way. Yeah. And they were talking about how the proton packs were so heavy, or were not as heavy as what you guys had. Do you remember that? Yeah, because I think when they made the first proton packs, they actually made them out of metal, and they were really so heavy. they were really hard. They're Bill really Murray heavy, mentioned yeah. that to them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Billy would uh, complain a bit about it. <laughs> <laughs> I was afraid to complain. So, but uh, but uh, the new one now, you know, is new material. It's much lighter so funny. and a lot of fun. Yeah. I like mean, in my day, it was heavy. Yeah. What was it like working with Bill Murray again? And and did you know Ernie back then that this was going to be a franchise that has the staying power that it does? Did you know it was going to be a huge hit? Uh, yeah. I said uh, 40 years from now, I'm going to be on the Today <laughs> Show. Yeah. No, I, you, you never know. I, I knew it would be a hit, but I, I had no idea that 10 years, 15, 20 years later, yeah. uh, people would be, as he turned their Volkswagens into Ectomobiles, and that's amazing to me that they've been so loyal and, um, and love the movie the way they do. And work with Bill Murray again? Working with Bill is always fun. I, I love, I lo oh, actually, all the guys were so welcoming. They, I consider them all friends, and um, yeah, but I, but I love Billy. Awesome. Yeah, so this is such an iconic franchise, but you also do a lot of other stuff, right? So I, yeah. yeah, you're doing the third season of Family Business. Family Business on uh, BET. I've been very fortunate. I've been acting for over 55 years. Jeez. Wow. Uh, my son is 56, That's and I was 56. acting before he was born. So, and I've been, I've been just had a, a wonderful career, and I'm so thankful. And uh, yeah, Family Business is out now, the yeah. third season. Yeah. And, and you know, it, it, you were here back in 2015. Yeah. Uh, and, and we want to right a wrong. We had a, a basket of, <laughs> of swag for you. Well, your birthday is coming up, so we have another basket for okay. you. Uh, well, not quite a basket. To finish the basket, we <laughs> didn't have the Winston Zeddemore. Oh, there we go. Yay. Action figure. Yes. So we wanted to make sure we completed the set for it. <laughs> well, I'm so a thankful. A basket with everybody's picture on it, but, but him but and everything. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. Well, there was a T-shirt, a Ghostbuster T-shirt with four guys and Danny Aykroyd twice. And I'm like... Yeah. Really? Yeah. I know. I know. We made a mistake. So it was our bad. It's all good. In 2021. So there you have it. That's funny. <laughs> really? That's funny. It took hey, us six years know? to make it right. But I didn't know how to respond, so I just didn't say anything. I know, either. and we appreciated that. And the fact that you came back <laughs> yeah. speaks volumes about who you are. That's funny. So thank you. Uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife hitting theaters this Friday. I love it. It won't disappoint. You're going to love it. All right. Coming up, entrepreneur Gary Vaynerchuk, uh, better known as Gary.
Gary V. Gary That's what I'm v. used to, yeah. And he wants to help you too. He's sharing the top emotional traits, he says, we should all master at work. And then in our Make Head Monday, food legend Mark Bittman's here to transform <laughs> a simple loaf of bread into tasty cookies your entire family will devour. We'll be right back. Is it easier to pass a bipartisan bill right now than it is to pass a Democrats-only bill? This supply chain issue has been a problem for months. Do you concur that this is going to get worse before it gets better? Are you concerned about the direction of your party? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is getting you ready for the holiday season. From how to get your orders on time. The race to prepare for a holiday shipping season like no other. To traveling shortcuts and safety essentials. What you need to know every morning on Today. This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Is it easier to pass a bipartisan bill right now than it is to pass a Democrats-only bill? This supply chain issue has been a problem for months. Do you concur that this is going to get worse before it gets better? Are you concerned about the direction of your party? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Cooking up a storm with Al Roker, a Thanksgiving feast and a podcast. Listen now. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're going to do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life in prime time and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. I forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Didn't fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back. Our next guest, an entrepreneur, motivational speaker, best-selling author, and CEO of the creative agency VaynerMedia. He doesn't sleep. He just plugs himself in at night. <laughs> yeah. uh, you may know him as Gary Vaynerchuk from social media, where he gives business advice to aspiring entrepreneurs and artists who are looking to build their brands. Well, now Gary is out with a brand new book called 12 and a Half, leveraging the emotional ingredients necessary for business success. And he's here this morning to tell us all about it. Good morning, Gary. Gary morning. Good morning, okay, gang. Thank 12 you. and a half. Yes. Why a half? And you call these soft skills. Yeah. Well, the world calls them soft skills. Mm -hmm. You know, the world calls kindness or empathy or compassion a soft skill. My argument is, They've actually always been the business hard skills, and it's time to have a different perspective on it. The reason I called it 12 and a half is, even though the guy we just saw in the clips and content like this, I have very strong candor. Me, the actual manager, the operator for the last 25 years, has struggled with candor one-on-one -on -one with employees, and I speak really? about it. Yeah. But you, the, you struggle with kind candor. Well, I rebranded it to myself, and I talk about it in the book as once I called it kind candor, I used to think that candor scared people. Mm -hmm. And I think fear is very scary when you're running a business. And, and just in life, I don't like fear. And I just didn't have a great relationship with candor. And I go into that here. And that's why I talk about you know, patience or humility being skills that people struggle with when they run a company or lead something. And that's the argument of the book. You know, I like these words. You have accountability, optimism, empathy. And you can do that and be firm at the same time. I think employees will respect that frankly. When you name those three words, I think most of the people watching right now don't think of those as like yeah. the hardcore business, right. like you're going to win thing. And that's the point. I, I actually genuinely believe this. This is not like over coddling. Like I'm trying to build an empire, mm -hmm. but I think you can through kindness. And I don't think most people think you can. No. Yeah. You know, Gary, one of the things you talk about is self-awareness. Yeah. Uh, and, and by the way, I've all of these skills seem like not just for business, but this is your about the business of you yes. and your relationships. But self awareness, how important is that? I genuinely believe it's the the punchline of all of this. Mm -hmm. If you're not in tune with how others perceive you, or you're lying to yourself, or you think you're tricking others, mm -hmm. 
you go through a path of anxiety. It, it ultimately doesn't play out. Where is the line between someone who is self-aware and someone else who says, well, you know what, it doesn't matter because I am who I am or I don't care what other people think. Where is the line there? The line is the results. Mm. Mm. <laughs> the yeah. line, right? Yeah. That's what's so fun about business and sports. It's on paper. In life, it's kind of gray for all of us, yeah. right? Real, the good. real world is gray. Business and sports, have points, mm. they have results. Let's, let's talk about sports for a second, yeah. Gary, because I, I heard that in terms of long-term plans, Gary V wants to own the Jets. Is that true? That is true. Please. I, <laughs> I, know. I know, I know. Or the, know. Or the Giants, for that matter. You're gonna need some soft skills, some skills to do that. The process of trying to buy the Jets has been the great joy of my life. You know, I, I want to. But if Sally buys them in 13 years, I'll be more than fine. It's that when you have a big professional goal, it allows you to kind of keep playing your game. Uh. I'm a real entrepreneur. I'm not, I was doing this before the accolades. I was doing this when I was doing wine with you in this yep. studio. Yep. I love my process. Of course, with entrepreneurship, things come along with it. Money, awareness, I get that, I'm aware of that. But if you're a true entrepreneur, you're actually far more like an artist than you are like the way the world perceives it. That's the point of what I'm trying to make here. We can have a different conversation about business. I love that because these skills aren't taught in business school, mm. right? Young kids coming out, they think it's the grit, it's the toughness, it's the grind. Correct, and listen, tenacity and work ethic are part of the equation. Yeah. But it's not sustainable if you're not in a good place mentally. Absolutely. And I, I think we can have this combo. And that's why I wrote the book. That's great. Gary V. Yeah. Thank you, Gary. Thank, Thank you. Always good to have you. Yep. Thank you so we much. We should have you in every week. We I'm always, interested. Every time you come in, I'm like, ah, oh, I got to get a He also said that you're a leader if you're a mom, right? Mm -hmm. If you're, you well, kind of redefined what it this means also, to be a leader. This also talks about being an employee and having empathy for your manager, something we don't talk about at all. Uh oh. They're human too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you, Gary. Again, the book, 12 and a half, out November 30th. Up next, best-selling cookbook author Mark Bittman is here in the studio. Finally, make a head mutt Yum, I he want one. He is making some crummy cookies, his, his title. Uh, and <laughs> tomorrow, we're going to catch up with Parks and Rec star Aubrey Plaza. All that and more. Third hour today. I'll be right back. Thank you. Thank you, guys. We are so excited. Make Ahead Monday. We're all excited about that. Got two recipes transforming a simple loaf of bread into something truly upper crust. But why we're really excited, Mr. Mark Bitten back in studio. Author of over 30 cookbooks. Host of the podcast Food with Mark Bittman is here with everything we need to know this morning. Get it? This morning. Yeah. He has Sorry. a new book Clever. out tomorrow. It's titled Bittman Bread with co-author Carrie Conan. And he's here to show us two of these recipes it's with the bread. Good morning to you. Good morning. So I think Good we morning. have to focus nice just for a moment on the, on the bread because both of these start with the simple loaf. You call it Bitman bread, um, which is really the core of this book. Yeah, the book is about the bread. We couldn't do the bread on the set because yeah. we'd need a two-hour spot. Okay. And no one gets that. But it's worth it. But the bread is like it uses sourdough to make 100% whole grain bread. Mm -hmm. This is the bread that has sustained human beings. I was this just is about to say, bread we don't have to be afraid. Because these days, we're all afraid of, a lot of people are right. afraid of bread. This is the right This stuff. is right it. Bread. All right, okay. so what you're making. And we bake it, within, we use this pot to mm. bake it, and it's all beautiful and everything, and now we can wow. do and that. And so we're going to make right. a dish to start off with called migas? Yeah, so when you have bread, you have leftover bread. Sure. Because you never can sort of pace it right. So this is a traditional Spanish dish called migas, and you start with fresh or stale bread, mm -hmm. okay. you soak it in water. This part's really challenging. <laughs> Once it's absorbed a lot of the water, you squeeze it dry mm -hmm. and it looks like this. And so you cook some chorizo. Mm. Um, that seems really easy. Well, so far, yeah, I mean, it is. <laughs> so far. You cook some chorizo, it's not complicated. <laughs> you cook some chorizo, you dump in your breadcrumbs. Now you've really taken advantage of all of this. Again, you're using whole grain bread. Mm -hmm. This stuff is good for you. Right. This, this is, is not new. the enemy. I've never heard of this. And then what is this? Um, then when the breadcrumbs cook a little while, mm -hmm. you add some garlic. Right. Okay. And you add some egg. Uh-huh. Oh. And what you're going to wind up with, I mean, obviously, you know, we're speeding up sure. because of this stuff. But Wait, I want to try. what you Fantastic. wind up with is I just, this. I ate, I ate, yummy? 
Yes. You ate some already? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He ate it. He ate it. Well, that's what he does. I like to do this. I like to do the egg. I mean, I like to do the bread, the chorizo, the garlic, da, 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 and then fry a couple eggs good. on top. I would have never thought of nice. Wait, what do you do on top of it? Fry a couple. I don't Ooh. put the scrambled eggs in. Mm -hmm. I fry a couple on top, but breakfast. we never would have gotten around to that. Good. Okay, now we're moving over to my area. Okay, so Cookies. now the, now the crew likes me again. So, um, yeah. So the other thing we do here is we take bread and we have bread crumbs toasted cr hard, right? Oh. We put them in a food processor with some sugar and spices and uh, butter and eggs. Mm -hmm. And we wind up with something that looks like this. And we add oh. a little flour and salt and these are the bread crumbs. sugar. And so these are your bread crumbs. And now you have no a dough. And you have a dough. Oh, and wow. if we have... How much time do we have? We got time. We've got time for you. We got time. It's time. Uh, so you have a dough. Okay. And you fold it in there. You fold it in there, and you do it much nicer cookies. than this. Yeah. But you wind up with who knew cookies. But these, did you taste this? Not yet. Can I? These are so good because these what are, are like called. What are these called? I call them crummy cookies because you <laughs> make them with breadcrumbs, but they're like what so crunchy. Like? Wait, I want that's like you the best cookie ever, right? You got peanut butter. Yes, yes, right, you can yes. use coconut, peanut butter, a cookie chocolate. made with breadcrumbs. But, Wait, but, but this is this like... in here? Do you put the peanut butter and the chocolate yeah. in here? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Here's the thing. Or you dot amazing. the top. I have never yeah. tasted a cookie. Oh, my God. It's really good, right? Yeah. Wait, this They're is really amazing. And the and crispy how do you get edge? it so crunchy on the edge, crispy on the edge? No, no. This is just like a regular cookie, but oh with breadcrumbs. Bread There's only a little plate. flour in here. It's mostly breadcrumbs. Wow. The baking is, you know, 350 at 12 for 12 minutes or whatever. This is actually a French thing. Mm. They, they call... Petit sable, which means oh little sandies. So now, did you start baking more bread during the pandemic like the rest of us? I started doing sourdough with whole grain when I was living in Berkeley five years ago or so. But during the mm -hmm. pandemic, we were like, we got to do this book. Mm -hmm. Carry it's on. Because, this is amazing. Again, this is 100% whole you, grain You made bread stuff, sexy, so. Mark. That's what you did this morning. Oh, <laughs> and you started with good bread. So but the guilt about no, saying right. sourdough is bread is the good bread. People really? know no. sourdough bread. So good. Mark, thank you so much for coming in. As that I was really fun. Chew. It's great to be back. Good to have you back. <laughs> a bread cookie. Who knew? This is really I good. Know. The new book, Bitman Bread, is out tomorrow. And for these recipes, trust me, it's worth it. Head to today.com slash food. I can't get over the cookies. It's really yeah. classic. Oh, I've never heard of that. Almost we'll like right macaroons. Back. And it wow. it doesn't seem like it's that complex. Mm. Yeah, this isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it is me. This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go! International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. <laughs> There is some late breaking news for hours in the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just me too. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. My part. 
Tomorrow, WWE superstar The Miz joining us live. Tomorrow Coming tomorrow. up, Bon Hoda and Jenna. Holiday wines for under 25 bucks that make perfect host gifts. I can't get over those cookies, by the way. <laughs> uh, a reminder, head over to our streaming channel uh, today all day. New episode of Saucy. Chef and Today Food stylist Anthony Contrino cooking up three simple yet classic Italian dishes. Yeah, just go over to today.com to watch. Have a great Monday, everybody. Have a great day, everybody. Maria's here all week. <laughs> Try the meal. <laughs>
but yeah, okay. Do you? It's going to bring a lot of joy. Have you, have you read, there's, I mean, I, we should show this tomorrow, but there's this hilarious, remember The Giving Tree by Shel Silverstein? I love The Giving Tree, yeah, what I about it? I love The Giving Tree what too, happened? but there's now this what? hilarious, um, basically, book that's like, I don't want to give you my branches. <laughs> And let's, it's the opposite let's of find tree? it. Let's find it for the second chat. Just hang on to your horses, okay. because the point is, do you think that Wait. tree wants to be here? Um, yes, I think it's going to give. A, it's going to make a beautiful, but beautiful holiday. But sometimes you don't want to give all of yourself. Sometimes you have to keep some of yourself for yourself. Okay. Speaking of songs, I'm going to tell you what so, the answer to that question is about the whether or not the tree wants to be here. There is a song okay. called "A Seed," and it is by Paul Sykes. It will answer your riddle about whether or not the tree wants to be here. It's called a seed, and it's by Paul Sykes. S Y K E S. Paul Sykes. Did the tree write it? I <laughs> co-write it with Paul well, Sykes. Yes, the tree did. But when you hear it, it'll you'll move understand. you. You'll move. It'll move you to tears, and you'll understand. Okay. So it was a big night last night, you guys, for Adele. Yes. <gasps> I was so mad because our Wi-Fi is down. Yeah. Look at Gail. There's Gail. Why does Gail get Gail invited gets to, to go everything? everywhere? Gail oh is God, everywhere. Melissa McCarthy. Who else is there? Let's see. Lots of people. Anyway, well, Adele. Adele sang her beautiful album. She promoted her album 30. She said it was an intimate audience. Oh. Lizzo was there. One of my favorite things is she sees Lizzo standing there. She says, oh, hi, Lizzo. You're trying to upstage me with your <laughs> feathers. But like she caught, like she just enjoyed herself. Oh my Should gosh. Tracy Ellis Ross was there. Tyler Perry was there, James Corden, we already said that, Gabrielle Union and Dwayne Ray. Tyler Perry and Drake. Why weren't we there? Because. Were you invited? Oh. Me neither. Okay. <laughs> anyway, it was really, really cool. But one of the, there were great moments and it, we've heard Adele's song, but to watch her sing it live yes. is amazing. And it's, it's all over online. But there was also another cool little surprise. Uh, there was a guy who wanted to propose to his girlfriend at the concert. She was brought out blindfolded, blindfolded, like had no idea. Just check it out. Will you oh, marry me, little Ashley? Oh, in real life. In real life. <laughs> yeah. Yes? Hello, Ashley. Hi. Hi, Quentin. You're all right. <laughs> Front row. Go, go sit down and enjoy the show. Thank God you said yes, because I didn't know who I was going to have to sing this song to next. You or him? Oh my God! The curse is so in shock. <laughs> oh my God! Can we listen to a little of Adele singing just because? Are we allowed? Right, we I feel like we. Too. Do we have any of it? I don't know. But can you imagine? You and I have been blindfolded recently. Can, can you imagine being, you know the sensation, it's weird. It's scary. We're showing no, up. No, we're doing it for, for work, for school, for, sh for shows. Oh yeah, sorry, we've been, we've, uh, that stories. sounds weird. We need context. We've been doing it because we go on a surprise. Hoda and Jenna love New York. Can you imagine taking off the blindfold, there is Adele, and your love is proposing for you, but and then I, Lizzo is on the front row? But can, can I tell you the funniest part about this to me, watching what it again? What are doing? <laughs> she looked at him, they were in this huge cavernous area. She had eyes locked on him. Yeah. Eyes locked. She didn't even realize. You know, sometimes you look around at the setting. She was all about they him. They should be getting married. Oh, and they are. And they are. Oh, my gosh. So, <laughs> okay. so Adele also got to talk with our best friend, Oprah. I love how Oprah does these interviews, like, in the most beautiful place in the gorgeous. world. Yeah, gorgeous. Okay, so she, she talked a lot. It was a really revealing conversation about her private life and her divorce from her husband. Let's take a look. I think Simon probably saved my life, to be honest with you. He came at such a moment, whereas the stability that him and Angelo have given me, no one else would ever have been able to give me. Like, especially at that time in my life, I was so young. And I just, I think I would have got a bit lost in all of it. Like, you know, and I think I probably, I could have easily gone down some dodgy paths, like, you know, and sort of self-destructed from, from sort of like being so overwhelmed by all of it. And he, he came in and was stable. The most stable person I've ever had in my life up until that point. Mm. 
Wow. She talked about her kind of emotional and physical transformation was she just quit drinking. She said she just decided she wanted to be clear. Yeah. She said, drink water now and all that stuff. And she also said it was the very first time her nine-year-old son had heard, had seen her perform. And she was said it was a, it was a privilege of her life to sing with him there. When I heard her say that, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, of course, it. I cried. Okay, coming up next, Paris Hilton's lavish wedding weekend. Oh, yeah, her over-the-top celebration or extravagant dresses, plural, of course. It's Paris. After, we'll have more on that after this. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go! International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're gonna do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Oh, welcome back. Okay, we're so excited because on Friday, do you guys remember we revealed our documentary of the month? It's called Set. It's about people who are competitive, fiercely competitive in the world of table setting. setting. Tables. Yes. How awesome is that? So two of the competitors, they're here. Who's we, here? We have Bonnie Overman. Hi, Bonnie. And Tim Wyckoff. Hi, Tim. Hey, y'all. Okay, they are going to work and they are setting two incredible creations. They have a $100 budget. They have 45 minutes. Now, you guys, wait till you see this do this documentary piece that we're doing. This is really competitive. This is no joke, and they are going to reveal their masterpieces at the end of the show. So, guys, we're starting our 45 yes. minutes. We're so happy that you're here, and we can't wait to talk about the documentary too. 45 minutes All on right. the clock, and, and, and 100 bucks. You have no money. Okay, good go. luck. All right, enjoy. <laughs> bye bye now. Okay, uh, Paris Hilton. Got married <gasps> yes. this weekend. Who to whom? That is... she got married to a, a guy yeah. named Carter. Yeah, Carter Ream. He's on Thursday, and the celebration actually went on forever. Days, days, forever. So they had. She had many different things to wear. Not only her wedding dress, but she had four dresses from the different parties. Okay, so for, okay, wait. Um, look at that. Look, she has that look. Then she has that look. So I she dressed a, in a pink number. I have a question. So for any kind of weekend party, how many dresses is too many? <laughs> or are there never too many dresses? How many dresses or how many nights? How many nights and dresses? Well, what my, do you think? My What's mom, the max? My mom used to have this theory called the rehearsal dinner. Yeah, which is what? Which even when we weren't at weddings, but it was like the first night before the party, is she'd the be better. like, don't do the rehearsal dinner because what that means is you're so excited ah, on night one yes. that you leave it all on the dance floor and, and then, then you have a night two. two. Is a dud. Then you have a night right, two. Right, right. So she just always reminds you, try not to go too hard night one. Have you ever done that like on the night before New Year's Eve? Like you just go out with your yes. friends and that's the fun night yes. and New Year's Eve is kind of the new, dud. New, I've never had a fun New Year's. Me either. I new never once. <laughs> Not one time. <laughs> you know why? There's too much buildup. Yes. There's too much, and everyone's expecting it to be great. Right. And all that stuff. And so, it's, I, yeah. I, yeah, I mean, I well, think. Well, you guys usually go, you guys well, hang with the kids and go to yeah, the night Yeah, we don't do night. anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, like, I like a costume change on a big night because why not? Why not? I Why mean, not? yes, you've got to mark moments in life. Yes. You can't just let them all go. No. All right, so people want to help you in your sore throat. So, okay. so far, we have a few. Here they are. <gasps> Gummy bears melted in hot water. Can we try that? Wait, what? We've got to try that. Gummy bears? Um, bourbon. Yeah, well, that's that, a good one. On a Monday morning, that's too no. hard. 
a uh, spoonful of honey. I'll try that. By the that. way, raw honey is probably even better, like a spoonful. Do we have like, any of that? Let's try it. Okay. Okay, and then, yes, yeah, somebody just put this on my Twitter. What? Think of speaking from below the rib cage. Minimize H sounds. Don't ever say my name. Or Henry's. Oda. Or, or Henry's. Hals. Or, or Hager. Hager. <laughs> or Haley or Hope. Oh, there's lots of H's. In oh, our... my God, that's not. There's lots of there's H's. There's a lot of H's. I'm just saying Okay, it so now. don't do those. Um, round out your words with the back of your throat before Be... they make it to the teeth. What does that mean? I'm rounding out the words Where's... from <laughs> the back of my throat before but they've reached, reached my, my teeth. teeth. Does that help with being hoarse? Do you hoarse? try that? I don't even know what that means. See, do, do I sound I don't, better? No. No? No, you don't. But <laughs> throat coat so far is what you guys Oh, yeah, throat keep, coat. Yeah, keep them coming, though, because we want to know, because I bet you guys have really good And maybe we're going to try work. that gummy bear next. And the raw honey. And the raw honey. Okay. Coming up next, one of our favorites, yeah. Blake Shelton. Yeah, I had a really mm -hmm. intimate conversation. You know what? <laughs> I don't need to know about your <laughs> secret date with well, him. Okay, he says something about Gwen that he's never told oh, anybody you know but I'm not, me. Not, I'm not interested. Just not interested. I can't wait to show Hoda. Let's go to commercial. My wonderfully intimate conversation with Blake Shelton coming up. <laughs> People really don't know what's going to happen. Really a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, I know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just fits. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is getting you ready for the holiday season. From how to get your orders on time. The race to prepare for a holiday shipping season like no other. To traveling shortcuts and safety essentials. What you need to know every morning on Today. Is it easier to pass a bipartisan bill right now than it is to pass a Democrats-only bill? This supply chain issue has been a problem for months. Do you concur that this is going to get worse before it gets better? Are you concerned about the direction of your party? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. The City Music Series on Today is proudly presented to you by City. Okay, of course, this is Honey Bee by Blake Shelton, and you all are sending me remedies, which I really appreciate. So, so try, I yeah. a huge bowl of honey. Try that in a little. So I'm going to try it. Ready? Right now? Okay. It's well, really thick. Is this what's I supposed think to happen? pour some of it off. It's a lot. <laughs> it's, a, wait, <laughs> it's a lot. Wait, why don't we read the intro? Try okay, you it. go ahead. Ready? Okay. Mmm. <laughs> Do you like it? <laughs> wait, let me hear how you talk after it. Well, my own mountain. <laughs> oh, God, don't throw up. Don't. Is it good? <laughs> I'll go. Okay. There are so many things to love about Blake Shelton. His baby blue eyes, his southern accent, his music. Don't you agree, Hoda? <laughs> yes, I do. But these days, Blake's all about good times and live music. He's the inspiration behind the entertainment franchise Old Red. And he had some big news to tell you about. Okay. I know you're jealous, right? I am. I know you're really jealous. And that honey... <laughs> works, but wow, it was a lot. We talked about you a little, but mainly we just talked about his life as a newlywed and his friendly feud with Ariana Grande. Take a look. Thank you. So, so Blake, I have to tell you, Hoda um, is sorry she couldn't be here. You know she has a life size cut out of you in her office. No, I didn't. Well, she does. Um, so I just am going to send this to you. <laughs> 
I don't even have an office, but I'm going to build one just so I can hang my life-size Hoda in there. Blake Shelton is many things. A country artist with 28 number one hits, a longtime voice coach, and newlywed with wife Gwen Stefani. But he's also the inspiration behind the restaurant slash bar slash live music venue called Old Red. There are four locations across the country from Nashville to Oklahoma, and now Old Red is heading to Sin City. I've always thought it'd be cool to have like a bar and grill type thing with some music, you know. The centerpiece of the of the idea is uh, to showcase new artists coming up and, and in an environment that makes them look like a big star. When you think back to those days of, of playing in bars and that, does that, you miss those days or not really? My first single was a song called Austin. If this is Austin. And luckily it just, it caught it caught on in, in country music. I lived in Austin in 2001, so I remember that song. Okay, thank God. <laughs> one person remembers the song, but even with a with a number one hit, I was playing places that didn't even have a stage. So to compare it to that, I mean, it's it there is no comparison. We can reach the stars. Blake's latest single, "We Can Reach the Stars," is his most sentimental one yet. You know, Gwen is. She's been pretty hard on me the last few years as far as she doesn't think I write enough music. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to take this opportunity to write a song for her as my vows. I'm just reading the lyrics and it feels like some sort of love poem. We always said we wish we'd met long before we finally did, but ever since that first kiss. I mean, it's so romantic. <laughs> well, I and are you blushing? Are you Actually, blushing? yesterday, I am blushing a little bit. Yesterday, I was driving to work and I played the song. And I remember sitting, thinking, wow, I, I did it. I wrote a song for my wife. No one can ever take that away. Anytime we get an argument, <laughs> whatever, I'll just put that on in the background. It's pretty romantic. Okay, let's talk about the voice. Ariana Grande calls you granddaddy. Is that right? Granddad? It is true. You know, it started out as, as like just a dad. And as if that wasn't painful enough, now it's turned into to granddad. And the thing is, what's your comeback? You just call her granddaughter? When you look at Ariana, <laughs> it's hard to pick her apart. I mean, she's Ariana Grande. What? There are no flaws. You've been posting some pictures on Instagram. I have. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm just wondering, did this person think he was going to marry Gwen Stefani? Of course I did. I mean, look at that hairdo. There was no resisting those locks. What about this look? Is this something you could ever grow? Couldn't you grow your hair this long again? Not only is that painful to look at, <laughs> it's it's painful the process of growing your hair. We have some other ones, but frankly, you are just cute. And a, and a... <laughs> While I loved looking at throwback pics, we couldn't rap without a Hoda and Jenna quiz. You ready? All right, bring it on. Okay, best wedding gift you received? We had a uh, an entire church pew that was given to us, and everybody, and there wasn't that many people. I think there was about 30 people at our wedding. Everybody signed it and wrote a message on it. Now that, that pew lives in the chapel. That's pretty pretty special to, to she and I. Both. How many pair of cowboy boots do you own? I own probably about 10 pair, but they're all the exact same boot. Your favorite hair color of your wife's? <laughs> There's a lot of choices in there. There's been a few times where she's kind of done a Marilyn Monroe yeah. top look with her hair, and oh my yes. God, that's, yes. that's good stuff. Thank you so much, Blake. We'll send you some of these pictures. Oh, please. I'll, yes, I'd love to have those so I can shred them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, oh, just sweet. sharing just some one on one time. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> one on one time. In fact, that's probably where I lost my voice. I just couldn't stop <laughs> chuckling way, with him. He's adorable. Right? I know. Well, he did ask huh? about you. When? And not that for poster, five seconds. That poster's <laughs> headed his way. Okay? Coming up. Need some wine to go with that Thanksgiving menu? Yeah, Leslie Sabraco has the perfect pairings as well as some bottles that make great hostess gifts after this. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just needs to.
This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it just is. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late-breaking news for hours into the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just did, too. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go! International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. Okay, guys, so somebody else sent in that mustard is a good... Um, it's a good way to get rid of it. So I'm just doing a little Hoda. Hoda's very nervous. I'm concerned. She just, she just ate a gallon of... Mm. I love mustard so much. Wait, do you feel that on your back of your throat? Mm. What does it feel like? Just great. And nothing goes better with mustard than Chardonnay, so we're <laughs> in the perfect segment. <laughs> All right, so guys, next week's Thanksgiving, and whether you're hosting a dinner or going to one, chances are you've got to have a bottle of wine or two or three. Okay, so we called up our pal wine expert, Leslie Sprocco, to lead our Monday Masterclass and show us how to create the perfect Food and wine pairings. Hey, Leslie. On any, I like this because hello, ladies. It's any hello, budget, hello. and that's a that's yes, a big key. one. So you're starting right. off with um, sparkling well, wines. Well, I've got that you I've love. got things from from steals to splurges. So whether you want to spend under twenty dollars or more than fifty dollars, I've got you covered. Got okay, so great. I'm starting out with, of course, fabulous fizz. I mean, mm -hmm. and it does, by the way, Jenna, it does go with mustard. So okay. don't you be afraid. Okay. It goes with honey okay. and mustard, sparkling wine. So I'm starting off with this first one. This beautiful wine you've got in your first class is called Cremont de la Moue mm -hmm. from Gerard Bertrand. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get your French on and your Italian mm -hmm. on as we speak about mm -hmm. the next few wines. And this is from the south of France. This is not Champagne. This is from the south of France from a place called Limoux. And Cremont means a style of sparkling wine. So and actually, this is where sparkling wine was invented, the traditional method down in Limoux. Yeah. Wow. So it's isn't that delicious? Yeah, is, you that, like that? is this the expensive one? Because it tastes Cheers, yes. so good. No, this is under what? $20. Oh, so good. It's, this yummy. Is, yes, it's so delicious because it has that lovely complexity and creaminess, um, but it's still really wildly affordable for and the holidays. And what about the splurge? Okay, so the splurge, now I might surprise you, I'm actually splurging with Prosecco. So now most people think Prosecco is this, you know, light and lively and, and inexpensive drink, and, and it is primarily, but there's some absolutely glorious Proseccos, and this being one of them, from the Hill of Cartizze. So I want you to say with me, okay. Valdo Biadne di Cartizze. <laughs> Valdo Biadne di Cartizze. And this is the Villa Sandi. It's really beautiful. Um, it's about $45, and it's lovely. Okay, so what, what um, pairs with these, Leslie? So, you know, sparkling wine goes with just about everything, but ham is a really great, oh. if you've got, a, if you're serving a ham, sparkling wine is one of the best things to pair with ham. It okay, also that's goes, why probably course, the mustard yeah. goes well with it, because mustard right. and ham are that's a wonderful right. combination. All right, exactly. nobody really thinks rosé and holiday seasons, right. but you disagree. I disagree. It's rosé all year, and rosé is the perfect. I love this wine. This is called Source of Joy. And if you look at the bottle, it's just right. such a pretty bottle to serve during the holidays. Source of Joy, right? And um, and rosé is really ideal for food, be all kinds of food. Again, talking about ham, turkey, anything, because it's made with red grapes, but in a white wine style. So this is, again, from the south of France, a beautiful wine that just has this lovely fruitiness, still got some substan you know, substance to it because it's made with red grapes, but again, Ham. This is perfect with ham and mustard, slathered mustard, yeah, perfect with appetizers. So take a sip right of that. What's the price of this baby? Mm -hmm. Again, under twenty dollars oh, for this have one. About a minute, Leslie, so, to kind of race oh, okay. through these. Oh, okay, so, okay. so we've got this beautiful Zinfandel blue quail from Mendocino County. 
Northern California, absolutely gorgeous with roast beef if you're doing kind of beef wellington. I've got a lovely Chardonnay right here. Mm -hmm. This is now, again, with mustard. This is from Sokol Blosser in Dundee in uh, Hills of Oregon. Um, and it is a splurge, about $40, but worth it. I call it the Goldilocks of, of Chardonnay. Not too, not too full, not too light. It's just right. And right. then we've got two beautiful gift wines for you guys. So those are food wines. Those go with everything on the table. These last two are really to impress. So I have this lovely Rioja. And if you want to impress for less, Rioja is the way Rioja. to go. It's a okay. region in Spain. And this is from Ray Ramon Bilbao. This is their limited edition. It's $25. Mm, it tastes it's good, like it drinks yeah, yummy. You know, twice as much. Isn't that yummy? Yes. It's delicious. delicious. Rioja, best value. And finally, a little splurge from Sonoma County here where I live, where I'm, I'm calling you from this morning. Um, and it is a beautiful Pinot Noir from Toomey Vineyards, mm. yeah, Toomey from Vineyards. the Russian River Vineyards, and that's part Pinot. of the the Silver Oak uh, family of wines, so mm. very famous. Oh my God, and that's this is so splurge. good! This, this is, is delicious. It's like, it's like drinking silk, isn't it? Oh, it's like drinking yeah. silk. Leslie, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Cheers, so check Leslie. out these Cheers. wines. Head to today.com/shop. Coming up next, I get to go to a very special place, helping women feel good, look good, and get back on their feet after this. Mm. Feel good? Okay, so there, uh, there are more remedies. Y'all are just really helping. Uh, evidently, a marshmallow. <laughs> I'm concerned. You know what I'm concerned about? <laughs> that the next set of remedies we're going to need are for like an upset stomach. She just, she's already eaten uh, mustard, a whole big <laughs> glob of honey, and now you're eating marshmallows. Mm -hmm. We'll okay. see. We'll see. M you're to right. We might need those remedies later. We'll, we'll keep you posted. Okay, by the way, today happens to be National Philanthropy Day, the perfect reason to kick off our Gift of Gratitude series. And there's no better way to show uh, you are thankful for what you have than by serving those who are less fortunate. And recently I took a trip to an incredible incredible organization here in New York City. It's called Bottomless Closet, mm. and I got to see firsthand what they're doing to uplift women and set them up for success and financial independence. When you look good, you feel good. But at Bottomless Closet in New York City, that's just the beginning. That's pretty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Behind every smart blazer and perfectly matched blouse is a woman ready to strut towards success. Our clients have, you know, have challenges. When they come in here, they put those challenges somewhere else on a shelf and they just look forward. Bottomless Closet serves disadvantaged women re-entering the workforce by providing them with resources to ace interviews, regain employment, and successfully transition into new jobs. From career workshops to resume help and wardrobe boosts, the organization has helped over 46,000 women get on the road toward financial independence. There must be something really meaningful about meeting somebody, seeing them get dressed for an interview, walking them through the resume process and the interview process, yep. and then hearing that they got that job. And the first thing they do is ring the bell. And when they ring that bell, the entire place just erupts in applause. You know that they've got that job. The staff, the other clients, the volunteers, we are all pulling in the same direction. It's so important for women to help women. We understand the, the need to build confidence. Women were disproportionately hit by pandemic-related job losses in 2020, accounting for more than half of the 10 million jobs that were lost. This made Bottomless Closet's mission more important than ever. One of their recent clients is 57-year-old Mildred Martinez. After working for 16 years in broadcast media sales, Mildred was laid off in August of last year. When you found out that they were laying you off, how did it, how did it feel? I was numb and I realized for the first time in my life, I don't have a job. And so there was panic and fear and a lot of crying, anger. Um, and what am I gonna do now? The job search landscape has changed since Mildred was last looking for full-time work. So with a whole new set of challenges in front of her, Mildred turned to Bottomless Closet. I knew about Bottomless Closet from a few years ago. Uh, I actually used to bring the, my work outfits that I didn't use. I never envisioned myself as being a client. And I think it wasn't until I realized that I was one of those women that was considered underemployed. Mm. I had to always work a second job to supplement 
my income. Attending Bottomless Closet's virtual workshops has given Mildred a new sense of direction as she seeks to switch industries and re-enter the workforce. So today, Mira and I are helping Mildred with her elevator pitch. Break it down into three pieces, the present, past, future, all right? Where am I now? Right now I want a job in this. Past, what have I done? What are the skills that I have? Just think about that holistically in two sentences. And then third, the future, what are you going to do for that organization? Do you want to try? Well, right now I'm currently unemployed and I'm actually, oh, I shouldn't say that. What, what should she say? <laughs> right now I'm looking for a job in. Okay. That's such a good little point that I would never think of. How does this sound? I'm looking to re-enter into the field of facilities manager. Beautiful. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> The next piece is the past. What are the skills that you've acquired? The most important thing that I bring is my understanding of relationships matter. Perfect. I think that's great. That's so great. positive. And then the future. future. What are you going to do for them? I'm going to bring to your team someone who is easy to work with, someone who's going to pitch in when things get tight. Most importantly, you know, is to leave someone with the feeling that they're being heard and taken care of. Mm, that's great. Excellent. Now that Mildred has her elevator pitch down, next came the fun part, putting together an outfit to get her prepared for her next opportunity. And or maybe looks, just the jacket. Yeah, that, that looks nice. So let's try, try it on. Okay. You look great. Oh, wow. Do you feel your... good? I do. Do you feel more hopeful? I do. I'm a lot more confident. And I feel like, you know what? My door hasn't opened yet, but it will. Oh, I love Mildred, and we spoke to her last night. She's been on a couple interviews, multiple interviews. She's hopeful for some opportunities, but she is brilliant and positive. Can I tell you something? Someone's gonna hire yes, Mildred. Yes, right she, now. Right now, that was a great, great piece. Tomorrow, we continue our Gift of Gratitude series with a story about a life-saving friendship. Oh, I can't wait to see this. Coming up next, Bonnie and Tim. Okay, they've been hard at work. They're creating their la landscapes. Oh. Evidently, they're inspired by us. We're gonna reveal their New Orleans and Texas tables. Oh, and talk to the filmmaker behind the new series. It's called Set. You do not wanna miss it. Coming up after this. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. We're going to kick off the Pink Power and Breast Cancer Awareness Month. <laughs> What's the best thing about being this age? You have nothing to prove because you already proved it. What does it feel like to be in a city that you love so much? I am humbly proud that I stuck up for my town. We all have the honor of helping reopen the doors. Broadway is back! Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Didn't fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. You think you run for office one of these days? I'm not saying no to anything. Wow. Welcome to Football Fright in America. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, boom. Yes, yes. Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Okay, what would you say if I told you every year dozens of competitors flock to the Orange County Fair in California to compete in the high-stakes world of... Table setting. Okay, I would say that that sounds like a plot of a movie. 
You're right. This cutthroat <laughs> competition is real. It serves as the backdrop of our November Documentary of the Month Club pick. It's called Set. The competition features a colorful cast of characters. And let's just say the knives are out, <laughs> literally. Take a look. Even I would compare to brain surgery just because the seriousness we put into it. This is my hall of fame, I guess you would call it. This table here was a vineyard theme. This was my dinner at the White House. Breakfast at Tiffany's, Phantom of the Opera. Growing a baby takes nine months. This takes six months, so it's almost like producing a baby. And it's very annoying when it, you have your baby and the judges don't like your baby. I remember my first table setting still to this day. I did a Lion King lunchbox social and I put lunchboxes as the plate and I actually got third place my first year. And then I was hooked. Once you got a taste of it, it just fueled the fire of wanting more ribbons. Oh. More ribbons with us now, the filmmaker Scott Golick, along with competitors Bonnie Overman and Tim Wyckoff. Okay, I had no idea this was so fiercely competitive, people. I didn't know. It's like the WWE at table <laughs> setting. People go down. We want to win. Bonnie, yeah. has it always been that competitive? Yes, uh, deep down, we really want to win. I mean, I think mm -hmm. all of us that participate produce tables that we think yeah. are the best in show mm -hmm. and hope the judges think so, too. Tim, okay, we are very competitive. Yes, fiercely. But we hold nothing to you yeah. all. How did you get involved mm -hmm. with this? My mom actually entered art into the fair locally when I was a child okay and so I entered art so I started doing things at like seven eight nine years old and then I saw that the the table settings in the youth department got the big ribbons uh -huh. and I wanted a big ribbon because all we got were the little single ones yeah. I didn't care about that I wanted a big ribbon so I started to do that so I've been doing it for over 30 years Scott I mean this is brilliant by the way we Jen and I this is the first we've ever heard of yes. this I don't know if this is something everybody knows and we're just learning about but how did you decide this would be the perfect subject for a documentary well I stumbled on it by accident I went to the Orange County Fair in Southern California it was a really hot day 100 degree weather um, was a bit overserved on the cold tall beers <laughs> into the air-conditioned room and there's a bunch of tables I didn't really think much of it right yeah. set my beer down alarms started going off people kind of yeah. ran over they're like this is the competitive table setting contest what are you doing I was like oh <laughs> picked up the beer looked around and um, I noticed that the tables had ribbons like first place no place and I just started really having strong opinions about tables I, was like, well, <laughs> I think this one should have won not this one and this is coming from a guy who eats off paper plates yeah, right? so exactly. like for it to have this reaction for me was huge kind of looked around the room everyone was having the same reaction I'm like well I'm, I have a feeling there's a lot of um, layers to this onion too well you know what I think will you guys do yes. you guys find going to your tables no, and just no. getting them all prepped and you guys can head that way okay. um, and then we're gonna just sit and visit yeah, with Scott. So we're just one more second. Scott, but Scott, but, but six months. It usually takes six months. And they have like tape measures. They're measuring how far the fork is from the whatever. Yeah, we heard that one person lost because they didn't put the dessert, dessert spoon, spoon or whatever. Yeah. But what's even more interesting is the way they prepare. It's like some of the people go into um, sensory deprivation chambers, one of the mm -hmm. women in the movie, and she, that's where she gets inspiration so she's not clouded by exterior thought. Um, one of the ladies in the film, she doesn't tear her tables down. She keeps 15 tables up in her ta uh, like in her house at all times. Wow. The husband, the family, everyone's just up in arms. It's, it's just constant nonsense. Well, oh my Scott, gosh. I think, okay, let's, you mind if we let's walk do it. Over? By the way, this is serious business, and these two tables, we should say, that these guys were making their tables with a hundred bucks yes and 45 minutes not and the, no and money used to six months yeah no money no time so, but you created so we've got wow Tim. Oh, Texas and New Orleans so we'll start with Texas Tim, this is beautiful Thank you. tell us what you did so um, I actually looked up what I would think of uh, important places in Texas, things that would drive interest. So the, the jukebox represents mm -hmm. the Continental, where a lot of people have gotten yes. their music career started. The the boots, of course, you can't go without with Texas. Yes. Um, the yellow roses of Texas. Of I, I also tried to do indigenous flowers, if I could, mm -hmm. of Texas. Yeah, and then, I see some of the wildflowers that we see grow every spring. That's what I tried to do. And then for the wagon wheel, it actually represents two places. Oh, we love this. This is so beautiful. Bonnie, okay. let's take New us Orleans. to New Orleans, girl. What New you got from this? Well, one of my oh. favorite places in New Orleans is the Garden District. Of course. So this is a Mardi Gras dinner in mm. the Garden District. Kind of an elegant um, feel. So I try to include a lot of the icons, such as the Mardi Gras mm -hmm. mask, my version of a king cake. I like your version. <laughs> with the crown Lanterns and mm. all. And then, of course, with the Garden District, beautiful, lush foliage and flowers. Well, purple, you, green, and gold, those are the colors of Mardi Gras. Right. And that's what you have on display here. Wow. You both did a beautiful Thank job. You. Thank you.
you. Thank you, thank you so Scott. much. Who's got best in show? Yeah. That's the, what we came here for. <laughs> you know, is it a tie? You know. I'm going it's, it's, with you know Texas and Tim. That's Sorry. how we go. All right, guys. Set, by the way, streaming now on Discovery+. Plus. Please check it out. And we'll be back after this. Thanks, guys. That's so cool. And the menu I'm going to get this. That's amazing. Welcome to Today All Day. All Day? Today All Day. All Day. This is a long oh, way of asking, man, yeah, who's your okay. favorite character you've ever oh, played? The right. unicorn. The unicorn. you got to have the unicorn. <laughs> what is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things? Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. Yeah. I don't want the wrath of Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Hi, buddy Cal. Cooking with me. Dad's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today. With simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit oh, now. How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You've received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do a weather out. <laughs> OK. All you got to do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, wow. Ambush Makeovers. Okay. Look at it. It doesn't, it doesn't look so good. No, it doesn't look good. Will you okay. judge us in a cook-off? I yeah. will, and okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day. Welcome to Today, All Day. Mitch, first I want to say I love seeing your face. Oh, thank you. Um, there's something about you and your presence, and when you walk into a room, something happens. We should point out, as we're sitting down to do our podcast, you did not come in alone. You came in with two young kids who were from Haiti, right. from the orphanage that you care for. Right. And look, there's a lot of things you could be doing in this moment. And your eyes are full right now. Like, I feel like they're full. Um I guess, why, why? Why take care of orphans? Um, because they're orphans. Mm -hmm. uh, these kids that I have with me, they're one's 15 and one's 16, they've been with me since um, they were four and five years old. Oh. So, you know, for me, they, they are my children, you know, uh, and uh, there's 53 of them right now. Um, there'll be more, and then there's some of them going off to college, so we're losing them, we're getting them in. Um, but I, I don't know how I mean that. Sometimes things just fall in front of you, and uh, it wasn't like I was looking to do this. I'd never had any experience running an orphanage before, that's for mm -hmm. sure. Um, I just happened to be down there, and I happened to be at that place, and I happened to ask the guy who had been running it, how come the kids aren't eating? There's no... You know, we're building all this stuff for you and the kids aren't eating. And he said, well, I don't have any money to operate this and I'm 84 years old. And, wow. and in one of those moments I said, well, I could probably do this. How hard could this be? And he said, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Here it is. And I've been running it ever since. So. Okay. I want to get to the orphanage. I, just, I was just so struck by the fact that that's how you walked in here. Well, um, they wanted to meet you. And I'm so, they were such, what, what wonderful yeah. children. This Gosh. is their first time out of the orphanage. I mean, they all said to me, we've never slept anywhere but <gasps> here in our beds because, you know, they came yeah. at three, four, five, they don't really remember. And uh, I said, well, you're going to sleep someplace else. <laughs> and when I told them we were coming to New York, I said, just get ready because you're not going to have seen anything like this. Right. There's a and, lot. Uh, There's a lot to take in. It's a lot. Yeah. Um, I just want to take it back because I feel like you are this, you're like full of life lessons and you write about a lot of them in your books. And I feel like we're all kind of hungry for something, you know, for purpose and meaning for more than what we do. And the old Jew was a guy who was like a lot of people who I know, the guy chasing it, the guy running after it, the guy getting, you know, you're an award-winning sports writer, man. You had it all happening. Money was coming in, fame was coming in. You had it all going. And yet somehow in those moments, you didn't feel uh, fulfilled. 
No, uh, I'm not alone, like you suggested. Yeah. Uh, I was, and it happened right at my mid 30s, uh, that I had was lucky enough to have an intervention <laughs> by fate. Uh, I happened to see Maury Schwartz, who was an old college professor of mine, on TV talking to Ted Koppel about what it was like to die. It was the first that I even realized that he was dying. And I did not understand it at that moment. But when I look back on my life, that was God or fate sending me like, okay, we're going to put a stop sign right in front of you Hmm. right now. And you're not going to be able to keep going forward. You're going to have to turn. Now let's see if you turn to the right or to the left. Let's watch what happens. Yeah. And uh, fortunately, I, I turned towards Maury and began going to visit him every Tuesday. And that changed the, the trajectory of my life along with all its priorities. And ever since then has been you know, an, an attempt to try to live up to those things as opposed to the things that were driving me the first 37 years of my life. Like he's such, I mean, he was a, a teacher, obviously, and still is. As you reflect on Tuesdays with Maury now, I mean, I know he taught you life lessons in the moment. What were the big ones he taught you then? And then what, like, what have you kind of figured out since? The biggest one or two that he told me that that stay with me, and I get asked that all the time, what's Mm -hmm. the biggest lesson for you? Because people have their own. Um, One was death ends a life, but not not a relationship. Hmm. Death ends a life, but not a relationship. Now, a lot of people end at that sentence. They say, Mm -hmm. oh, that's so profound. I said, well, there's an adjunct to that sentence. And the adjunct is, death is a life, but not a relationship. But you have to have worked on that relationship Mm. while you were alive Mm. in order for death not to end it. Mm. So if you don't spend any time investing in those relationships, Mm -hmm. death is death. Mm -hmm. Dead with a capital D. Mm -hmm. You're done. You're bye-bye. Your money, they're going to fight over. They always do. Your beautiful body's going to rot in the ground next to the fat guy. You know, (laughs) it doesn't matter. Everything that you worked on here on earth, gone. But the one thing that you had control of, sharing yourself with other people, giving to other people, spending time with other people, teaching other people, you didn't spend any time doing. You're too busy working. Mm -hmm. So then when you're dead, you are D-A-A-D, dead, (laughs) gone. So death ends a life and not a relationship if you work on those relationships while you're here. And... I was not doing that. I was you were busy. Yeah, right. I was like busy. I mean, that word gets so you know busy. Ridiculous. How many times have we used it? Yes. I've been so busy. It's been so busy. It's so busy. It's and so it's busy. almost like an ah, wow. You're yeah. you're busy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. People admire they the love word that. busy. Yeah. yeah, great. Oh, great. How's it going? I'm so busy. Oh, great. <laughs> and you know, you realize there's such a price to the word busy because it means that you can't. You know, it, it, busy um, in in Creole is occupy like from occupied, and that's like more uh, more true. You know, when you think about it, it means you're so occupied with yeah. whatever you're doing, you're not paying attention to something else. And uh, I was like that. So, um, you know, that was the first one, and Maury certainly taught me that. And the other big one was giving is living. And this came about, if you have... 60 seconds for an anecdote. Please. Okay. You have, I, by the way, I'm making space for you, Mitch Album. You please. You, okay. Well, this, is, this is your stage. It's a new format. <laughs> I don't know how long I'm supposed to talk. But, um, you know, I, I used to, I wasn't the only person to visit Maury, obviously, and people came on other days other than Tuesdays. And sometimes they came on Tuesdays, and I began to observe that there were a lot of people who had seen him on Nightline, and they were very uncomfortable with somebody who was dying. They didn't quite know what to say. They would come in all prepared. You know, they have mm. pictures. They, you know, it was like going to be a, a session. A thing, yeah. And they would go into his office. The door would close. And they would come out an hour later in tears. Huh. But they'd be crying about their job, their divorce, their love life. Their, and I would say, what happened? They'd say, well, I don't know. I went in and, you know, I tried to cheer him up. But, you know, after about five minutes, he started asking me about my life. And so I started telling him. And they started really asking me. So I really started telling him. He started asking, giving me advice. And next thing I know, I was crying. And myself. I went in to try to cheer him up. And he ended up cheering me up. Huh. So after a while, I went into him and I said, I don't get it. Yeah. Like, if ever anyone had finally earned the sentence, let's not talk about your problems. Yeah. Let's talk about my problems. It would be you. So why, don't, why, why are you doing this? And he said, Mitch, why would I ever take from people like that. Taking makes me feel like I'm dying. Hmm. Giving makes me feel like I'm living. And that was one of those like, 
lightning bolt things that to this day I can still see him mm. saying it to me and I can still hear him saying it to me and it was so, you know, when you hear something that's so profoundly true and yet you were unaware of it until that moment, it feels like somebody just clonked you with a shovel, right? And I, I'm saying, well, here's a guy who's dying and the opportunity to get from other people is there for him at every moment and he wants nothing to do with it. He just wants to give. There's something there mm. that if I can apply it to my life mm. when I'm young enough and healthy enough, I'm going to be a lot happier. And that was the turning point for me. People really don't know what's going to happen. Only a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. <laughs> There is some late breaking news for hours in the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just did too. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. You think you'll run for office one of these days? I'm not saying no to anything. Wow. Welcome to Football Fright in America. Today is getting you ready for the holiday season. From how to get your orders on time. The race to prepare for a holiday shipping season like no other. To traveling shortcuts and safety essentials. What you need to know every morning on today. This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Cooking up a storm with Al Roker, a Thanksgiving feast and a podcast. Listen now. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, shop today with Joe Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Did you take that then even because the other days of the week, I would imagine you were still sprinting. Were you able to apply like the things he said then? Uh, not immediately. Yeah. I think this is stuff is a slow boil. Yeah. I think it gets into, you know, first you go home and you talk about it with your wife. Yeah. And she says, yeah, he's right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and so now that's two people who are kind of telling you and you start you begin to start. It's like binoculars. You know, when you first put them up, yeah. they're never in focus. Uh, but you just start to turn those things and yeah. they start to get in focus and you realize I'm turning the right direction. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to keep turning until they get really sharp. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of what happened with that idea. I said, this is the right direction. And I just kept turning it until it basically became my life. So the hard charging you, because you were you were obviously hitting your stride in your field, yeah. and at that moment, um, did you like how how long did it take for you to really feel the change? It took until Tuesdays with Maury came oh, out, wow. because again, like I say, this was God or fate just it's saying, okay, let's see what direction you're going to go. So I took the first act of the giving is living honestly, was writing the book about Maury hmm. because I wrote it to pay his medical bills. Mm -hmm. And all the money went to him to pay his medical bills. It wasn't supposed to be, we weren't supposed to be sitting here, Hoda. You were never <laughs> supposed to know who I was. Uh, I was never supposed to enter your world. I was going to be living out in the Midwest and being a sports writer. That was it. And, you know, they didn't, they printed, I don't know, 20,000 yeah. total copies wow. for the whole world. Is that world. right? Yeah. I thought I'd have them in the trunk of my car for the yeah. rest of my life at Thanksgiving. I'd be giving them out <laughs> to family members. And so it was supposed to be a big book, but um, but I wanted to help him pay his medical bills because he didn't have the money to do it. And it was the first thing that was in front of me after he had kind of made this revelation about giving his living. And I'm saying, well, I can apply this right here. Because mm -hmm. he told me, he said, I'm very afraid I don't have the money to pay for all these bills. And when I die, they're going to have to sell the house. And he said, I'm going to have two deaths. One when I go in the ground and one when I realize all the damage I'm doing in my family by incurring all these costs. So... I began to write up, start up this book, and I went around right around where we are here sitting. 
around New York City, went around to a bunch of different publishers and, and said, I just need this much money to pay his bills. That's it. That's all I want. It's an it's amazing thing. I'm learning all these lessons from this. An old man talking to a young yeah. man. I think it could be a good book. And we got told no everywhere what? we went. Everywhere. No boring Nobody wants to read about that. It's depressing. You're a sports writer. Nobody. I mean, I can't tell you how many people just told us to take a Did walk. you almost throw in the towel or did you just? I almost did, except yeah. that it was for somebody else. I would have <laughs> if it was for me. Wow. And that was when I learned that when you do things for other people, mm. you have much more mm. energy and passion mm. than when for yourself. At least I do. Mm -hmm. I find it very hard to ask for things for myself. You know, mm -hmm. I don't even like asking for reservation for, <laughs> <laughs> you know, at a, at a restaurant. Uh, but if it's for one of my kids, I'll, yeah. I'll go through a wall yeah. and I will, I'll, I'll be a, a pit dog. So what happened? Did you? We found one publisher who agreed uh, three weeks before Maury died to oh, uh, publish a book. And uh, I said, we need to get the money up front because I need to give it to him while he's alive. Uh -huh. And I went, and Maury didn't know that I was doing any of this. And I went to him uh, a few weeks before he died, and I said, listen, I got some good news. You know, this, this taping, he wanted me to write a thesis. And I, I kept, didn't have the heart to tell him I wasn't enrolled in college anywhere. I'm not really sure where I was going to write a thesis. Don't you have to be in school to write a thesis? <laughs> uh, and so I said, I got some good news. You know, this conversation we've been having. And yeah, I said, um, well... There's a publisher. I found a publisher wants to publish it. He said, really? Who? I said, Doubleday. He said, ooh, I heard of them. I said, yeah, well, not only that, but they're going to give us some money for it, and I want you to take all the money and pay your bills and don't die a second death. And mm. I always tell people that for me, that was the end of Tuesdays with Maury, for me, because I had finally done one nice thing for this man who had done so many nice things for me up to that point in my life. I had finally actually learned a lesson and put it into action, you know? And so really it began there. But then when you asked that second part of your question, like when it kind of changed mm -hmm. my life, well, from there I began, I didn't, I didn't write a word of Tuesdays with Maury until after Maury died. Mm -hmm. So he never saw any of it. That's what's so remarkable about oh. that book. He continues to teach all these people and Maury never saw a word of the book. Huh. It just goes to show you, you don't know in this life how you're going to influence things when you're gone. He had no idea that we'd be talking mm -hmm. about him now, you know, 26 years later. Yeah. Uh, but he, he didn't need to because that wouldn't have been the reason to do it. He wouldn't have said, hey, let's talk now so that Hoda will be asking you some <laughs> questions one day on her podcast. He did it because it was from his heart. Wow. And when you do the things from your heart, they're right. What did you lose the day he died? Um, a, a guidepost. Hmm. You know, every week that I was in there, I knew that I could ask any question about my life and that he would give me the right answer. Hmm. Not only because he was a great teacher and I loved him, but because he was about to step out of this world and he had it in perspective and he was able to say to me so many times on little things that i would bring up he'd say mitch this matters <laughs> mitch this doesn't matter <laughs> or mitch you think this matters <laughs> but when you get to where i am and then he would always say and you will get to where i am it's not going to matter oh. and i lost all of that um and I didn't have it again um, until my parents became, you know, older and, and, and frail before I lost both of them. And um, I would have discussions with my father the same way. Did you? Yeah. yeah. Your dad was always a teacher too? or He was quiet, yeah. more reserved, but as he... As he uh, Got older and and you know and and he suffered a stroke and mm -hmm. his, you know for a few years there he, he was limited in his movement uh, but you know he I think he realized that the end was coming and we had some good talks uh, that was the first time since Maury died that I felt that I was was getting that kind of wisdom too because he knew also life is short we learn something at the end wow. that we don't have at the beginning we just get this perspective and it's like. You look over the precipice and you see, okay, this is really what life is. And then if you're lucky, you get to turn around and tell the people you love, hey, I'm about to go there. Let me tell you what I just realized. Yeah. Pay attention. Yeah. 
and I paid attention. When was your dad the proudest of you? Wow. That has never been asked of me before. Um, I like to think um, it was when I got married <laughs> because I think he saw me as, uh, you know, driven like you were relating before and to the point of maybe missing out on <laughs> that part of life because I didn't get married till I was 37. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of years there in your 20s, you know, when mm -hmm. your parents are going, you know. What are you doing? Well, yeah, what are you doing? What about, well, how about this one? She's nice, you know, <laughs> about this one. She's... And so uh, uh, I think I remember when, when Janine and I um, told my parents, it was on my dad's 65th birthday, mm. and we were all gathered as a family, and that's when we broke the news. And mm -hmm. I remember him jumping up from the table, like jumping up. I never saw my dad jump, and he jumped up from the table, had this big smile on face. I said, I've never seen that. Like, you ever do that with your parents? Yeah. Like, I've not seen that look before. I thought I saw every look. I, I thought I knew everything about you. You know, I've lived my whole life with you. And, uh, and I, he gave me a look that I'd never seen before. So I think maybe it was that moment that he said, okay, we pulled him back from the, <laughs> from the abyss. He's going to be married. He'll have kids. He'll be a family person. Because my dad always felt that that's all that was all that mattered. You know, that was what, what was important to him. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're gonna do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life in prime time and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is getting you ready for the holiday season. From how to get your orders on time. The race to prepare for a holiday shipping season like no other. To traveling shortcuts and safety essentials. What you need to know every morning on Today. This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're going to do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In prime time and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it's just the up a storm with Al Roker, a Thanksgiving feast and a podcast. Listen now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Mm -hmm. um, did your dad get to see you with your kids? Yes. He did. Uh, in fact, my dad met Chica. Oh, he did? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was special. You've written so many beautiful books. Um, finding Chica was like, I mean, so many moved me to my core, but yeah. that book in particular had so many moments in it. And um, it's about a, a young girl from the from your orphanage who you bring home with you to help care for her in all kinds of ways, you and your wife. And you, you, did you guys ever want kids of your, oh, yeah. of your own? You did? Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I, I dragged my feet on that. Mm -hmm. And uh, next thing you know, you're in your 40s. Yeah. And next thing you know, it's not so easy. Yeah. And uh, it's not like they told us in high school. And, um, you know, that was my fault. Um, we didn't get married till late, so we didn't have a, a big ramp up. And I shouldn't, you know, if I, it's probably the biggest regret of my life. Uh, but God works in funny ways, mm. you know, because now I've got 53 children. Mm. And so does my wife. And we look at them as our kids and we know everything there is about them. And and uh, you know I'm there. I'm in Haiti every single month. 
as kids come up and stay with us and you know they're all going to go to college right down the street from us we, you know, four of them are already mm -hmm. there we see them every weekend and during the week and they come over so I, I, I was very lucky you know God granted me uh, this escape hatch you know like okay mm -hmm. well you missed out on the natural way of doing it but as Chica taught me, there's no one way to make a family, you know. She was our daughter in every sense of the word, and I, I would never think of her as anything otherwise. Um, will you relay, there's a part of the book, and it's about how you had to go off and write your column for the Super Bowl or something, yeah. and she was there in the house. Yeah. The radio show. Yeah, radio show. Yeah, uh, well, at this point, Chica suffered from uh, DIPG, which is a brain tumor that mm -hmm. hits young kids, usually between ages four and, and nine, and usually takes them within four months. And we were advised to just take her back to Haiti and let her die because it wasn't, you know, it was gonna happen to her. And I knew that this kid was tough because she was, she was rough and tumble from the time she came to us. She survived the earthquake when she was three days old. <laughs> uh, the, her house fell down around her and she and her mother, the, the roof fell backwards from what I understand, and so it didn't land on top of them. It was just made out of tin, so it fell backwards, and she was like exposed to the heavens with the earth when the earth stopped trembling, but they were alive, and she was three days old. So I, I used to say to her, you survived an earthquake when you're three days old. You can do anything. <laughs> and um, so we said, she was five, and we said, we're not taking her back to die. I'm not t I would never take a kid to die. We're going to fight as long as she wants to fight, and it turned out to be two years. Mm. And a lot of that two years was, you know, she was buoyant and funny and had her faculties. She got swollen by steroids and things like that, treatments. We took her all over the world. We lived in Germany for a while, all this stuff. But she was there. She was present. And uh, towards the end, she couldn't walk anymore. That was one of the things that she lost. But she was fine with that because I carried her everywhere. So I was her transportation. Mm -hmm. I'd take her to the bathroom. I'd take her to the car. I'd take her to And she would just lift her arms up yeah. and, okay, taxi. You know? <laughs> So um, we were sitting at the table and uh, we were coloring and I looked at my watch. I realized I was late for this radio show. And I said, uh, oh, chica, I got to go. And she said, no, Mr. Mitch, just stay here and color with me. And I said, chica, I have to work. And she said, Mr. Mitch, I have to play. Like it was just so yeah. per perfectly parallel. And I said, but chica, you don't understand. This is my job. And she crossed her arms and made that little pouty face. And she said, no, it isn't. Your job is carrying me. And just like that moment with Maury, you know, I was like, oh, my God, what a sentence. You know, I, I felt just I felt my whole yeah. soul drop down to my feet. And uh, she didn't realize, of course, what she said, but I did, you know. And, of course, she was right. My job was carrying her, not just at that moment, but for her life. And all of our jobs as parents are to carry our children through the hard mm. times and, 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 and the good times. And... I realized that metaphor, you know, because I, I, I would always, I mean, she was heavy, you know, and mm -hmm. I wouldn't have to f really fill my arms up. And I realized, like, I used to carry around my books, my work, my awards, my paycheck, my status, my whatever it was. And then you have to drop all that to carry a six and seven year old around because she can't walk herself. And you realize it's no comparison. And what we choose to fill our arms with, up with and what we choose to carry mm. is actually what ends up defining us. Mm. It's not us, it's what we choose to carry. And carrying her was the most honorable, best thing I've ever had an opportunity to do. And I miss, when I miss her, which is every minute of every day, mm. I physically miss the um, mm. sensation of every time I would lift her, I can do right here, and her head would go right here, mm. and uh, I'm right next on my shoulder. And um, it was a privilege wow. to carry her, you know. This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go! International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. 
Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Is it easier to pass a bipartisan bill right now than it is to pass a Democrats-only bill? This supply chain issue has been a problem for months. Do you concur that this is going to get worse before it gets better? Are you concerned about the direction of your party? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is getting you ready for the holiday season. From how to get your orders on time. The race to prepare for a holiday shipping season like no other. To traveling shortcuts and safety essentials. What you need to know every morning on Today. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is getting you ready for the holiday season. From how to get your orders on time. The race to prepare for a holiday shipping season like no other. To traveling shortcuts and safety essentials. What you need to know every morning on Today. Do you ever say to yourself or wonder, like with there's so much love and there's also pain that goes with, do you ever play the balancing game? Like a lot of people don't get the great love that you have, but they they also don't feel the great loss. <clears throat> Somebody much smarter than me once said that the only whole heart is a broken heart. <laughs> and I have come as I've gotten older uh, to realize that that's true. My mom used to say to me, uh, I'd say, how, mom, how old do you want to be, Mom? Why don't you live to 100? And she would say, I don't want to be the last one left. <laughs> I don't want to watch everybody I love go. Mm. And, of course, when you're younger, you don't really understand that. You don't have understand how time runs out. Mm -hmm. But when you get older, and, and especially when your parents go, and you're kind of next in line now, mm -hmm. you're the old one of the family, you, you start to think about that a lot. And um, I realize that they have to go hand in hand. Mm. They have to go hand <clears throat> in hand. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, if you want to know those highs of that kind of love, mm -hmm. the kind of love that can break your heart mm -hmm. when you lose it, then you're going to have to endure the, the lows when you lose it. Mm -hmm. You should never, ever have to lose it from a child. I, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. I don't care if they were the worst person in the world. Mm -hmm. I watched Chica's last breath. My wife and I, we were on both sides of her in bed, and... Uh, the, I carried her out to the uh, mm. hearse or car, whatever it's called. It was, and they were kind enough to all wait outside. They weren't inside the house. And as Haitian tradition is you wash the body and nice and clean, and she had a beautiful dress, and I carried her in that dress out mm. to, to that car. And when they took her away from me, I can't really describe that moment except it literally was like somebody was able to reach inside my chest and they pulled mm. half of my soul out and put it in that car mm. and drove away with it. And I fell, mm. physically fell to the concrete of the driveway and I couldn't get up. I was just sobbing. Mm. And my wife was, Janine was with me too. And that's the flip side of mm -hmm. loving somebody so much. Mm -hmm. That's the flip side of loving somebody. Mm -hmm. But to put, try to put a little positive on okay, this. Okay, yes. And um, in, this, in this new book that I wrote, which is about, I don't know, you know, go into the whole thing, but it's about a bunch of people who were shipwrecked on a it's boat. Called and the, yeah, the Stranger in the Lifeboat. It's called The Stranger in the Lifeboat. Yes. And, 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 and one of these survivors of a, a boat crash claims to be God. Because they were all calling, you know, God help us, God help us. And then he floats, after three days, he just floats in, out of the ocean. And they pull him in and, he's, and they say, who are you? And he says, I'm the Lord. And what are you doing here? Well, you asked for you me. You called for me. You right? called for me. And at one point later in the book, um, one of the characters says to him, you know, why did you take my wife? You know, uh -huh. he's mourning his wife, he's mourning his wife. And, and he goes into this talk about how it's, 
I know that all of my children cry when they lose their loved ones, but I promise you, those who are lost are not crying. Hmm. And, you know, I think I wrote that almost as, yeah. as therapy, yeah. you know, uh, because I, I like to think of Chica, like I lost her, but having gained her and she got her smile back and she got her running back. Yeah. And when I wrote that sentence, I remember I was typing it. And sometimes you labor with a sentence when you're a writer, you know, wrong word, yeah. this, the wrong verb. But, and that one just spilled Came. out, you know, yeah. uh, you cry, but I assure you they do not. And I thought, okay, that, that came out way too easy for it to be, you know, uh, just writing. There's something more yeah, than writing. I have ch just, just for the record, I have chills, <laughs> like right now, right all over me. Yeah. People really don't know what's going to happen. Really a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. Oh, no. More good people than bad people, you know, right? Some late breaking news for hours into the Iowa caucuses. By the way, I'm going to do that All right, it just made it. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. We're going to kick off the Pink Power and Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Go! What's the best thing about being this age? You have nothing to prove, because you already proved it. What does it feel like to be in a city that you love so much? I am humbly proud that I stuck up for my town. We all have the honor of helping reopen the doors. Broadway is back! Cooking up a storm with Al Roker, a Thanksgiving feast and a podcast. Listen now. People really don't know what's going to happen. Really a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news for hours into the Iowa caucuses. By the way, I'm All right, it just made it too. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Cooking up a storm with Al Roker, a Thanksgiving feast and a podcast. Listen now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. I mean, God is clearly a prominent... Uh, force in your life, in your writing, and as we sit here, I can feel it too. Um, you know, just explain God's role in your life. Well, I I, I separate God from religion. You know, yeah. uh, I think it's just too magnificent a world not to have been designed. The human body, you know, which I got to know mm -hmm. way more than I wanted to with Chica, you know, and they explain how your brain works and mm -hmm. all, you know, every little facet of it. It's just too, scientists have come mm -hmm. to the same conclusion. Scientists who began by saying there's no such thing as God, you can't prove it or whatever, end up saying, well, you know what, there's no other explanation mm -hmm. because this is just too complex. Mm -hmm. Nobody could just sit down and let's yeah. design this thing. And, um, and the joy in the world is too magnificent for it to just have been you know, we're just worm food when we're done. Mm -hmm. So for me, God is is the belief that there's there is a bigger source of, of everything that's going on here. And therefore it's okay to aspire to bigger things mm -hmm. and not just what we're gonna get while we're here. Mm -hmm. Because if really we really knew that there was nothing and that it was just a race to the finish. Mm -hmm. I think everybody would just start, you know, yeah. grabbing for themselves and say, what, what do I care mm -hmm. about laws? What do I care about respect? What do I care about decency? You know, it doesn't matter. You know, when we die, we die, we die. As long mm -hmm. as I stay one step ahead of the law, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm fine, you know. Yeah. Um, but the reason that we don't do that and the reason that we're kind to other people is that we have this sense that there's something bigger than all of us that ties us all together. And some people call that God. Some people call that spirituality. Some people call that heaven. Some people call that humanity. Mm -hmm. But I think it's all tied up. I think God is 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 more a piece of 
each one of us mm -hmm. than necessarily this big, huge silhouetted mm -hmm. figure up in the sky. Mm -hmm. And I look for the God in everybody. Mm -hmm. And more often than not, if you look, you find it, mm -hmm. you know. And so I try to work that way and write that way. Do you think, um, I was just thinking about the number of, you know, kids you're caring for and the, and the long, beautiful road ahead, watching them go all the way to, to college. Do you think you have a finite amount of space in your heart and soul for um, others? Or do you think you can, because I was just looking at your plate and it seems super full. And um, I don't, I'm asking for a friend because I also sometimes think, I think I have room for more, room for more. And you wonder, do you, or is, is there always room? Is there a time where you say, okay? Um, if there is a time where you say, okay, that, yeah, that. it's when it starts to come at the expense of the other important things oh. in your heart. Yeah. But not when it comes at the expense of, well, then we can't take the Italy trip. Oh, right. Right. Or then we can't, or then I might not be able to get that, you know, promotion or whatever. Then I think you still probably have some space that you haven't used. Mm -hmm. But if you find, I mean, you know, 53 kids is a lot of kids. Mm -hmm. um, but it just makes you, it just makes you say, okay, pretty much every day to pretty much every kid, I will go up when, I, when I'm there and say, did I tell you today how much I love you? Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, sometimes I say it because just I'm teasing them. Sometimes I say I for, I'm forgetting if I did or not. <laughs> and they say, you told me this morning. I said, okay, as long as I told you. And so you just have to change. You just have to move mm -hmm. things around a little bit. And mm -hmm. uh, But I think love is a pretty elastic mm -hmm. uh, uh, sensation and, and, and emotion. And if there is a, a wall to it, I haven't reached it yet. Mm. You know, I think... The other part that goes with that mm. is pushing the walls out to receive love. Mm. Because a lot of people, and Maury taught me that in a very big way. He said, you know, your problem isn't going to be in, in giving love out to people. It's going to be in accepting it. Oh. You know, you don't think you're worth it. You don't think you warrant it. Wait, that's big. You know, yeah. That's a big yeah. statement. Very big. And I think a lot of people, they think their problem with love is that, you know, um, that they, 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 they can't find somebody to give it to or whatever, but a lot of the times the problem is they don't know how to receive it. Someone wants to love them and they back off, they run away. It's, a, it's that joke about, yeah. you know, I don't want to be part of any club that would have somebody like me as a member, you know, the Groucho Marx thing. And, uh, you know, you got to get over that too. Yeah. What? Um, so how did you learn to, to receive it? What did you do? Um, I think I, I began to learn with my wife. Yeah. And and I really learned with the kids because um, love and need are often connected, you know, and uh, I see that, you know, they had no one else. They had no one else. Mm -hmm. And when Chica's brother, so Chica had a baby brother, mm -hmm. her mother died giving birth to that baby brother. Oh. So therefore, the whole reason that Chica ended up in our lives was because the baby brother was born, who she never saw. Mm -hmm. Because on the day that he was born, he was taken away, she was taken away, she was brought to us, he was raised by somebody else. On her funeral, mm -hmm. day of her funeral in Haiti, uh, the uncle who had been taking care of her, of him, found out and came to the, came to the mm -hmm. funeral. And afterwards, they came back to the orphanage. He looks just like she did oh, at three. Wow. He was three years old. And uh, the uncle pulls me aside and he says, listen, I've been raising this boy, but I have three kids of my own. I don't have a job. I don't have any money. We barely have, right. can get by. And I'm looking around at your orphanage here. Could you, is there any way you could take him? Wow. So I looked at him and he looked just like Chica. And I... I said, Moise is his name. Moise, like Moses. And I said, Moise. And he looked at me. It was about over there where that yeah. trash can is. I said, Vinny, which means come. come. And he took one look at me, and then he ran <gasps> and jumped into my arms. 
jumped into my arm. <laughs> and I said, well, this is a done deal. <laughs> and we made room. Oh. And then we found out that she had an older sister. And we invited her to come. She was being raised by somebody else, not even related to her. And she came and spent a day with us and, uh, and a night with us. And the next day, they were supposed to come pick her up. And she was nine. And on her own, she went to the security guard and she said, if those people come back for me, tell them I'm not here. She was nine. She wanted to stay. And so now she lives with us. Oh, my gosh. And so, you know, you just make room. And, you know, you don't even think about it. Mm -hmm. You just say, come, and, and they jump in your arms, and there they are. And then you find, you find the space and you find the room. Is it easier to pass a bipartisan bill right now than it is to pass a Democrats-only bill? This supply chain issue has been a problem for months. Do you concur that this is going to get worse before it gets better? Are you concerned about the direction of your party? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. You think you'll run for office one of these days? I'm not saying no to anything. Wow. Welcome to Football Fright in America. That was amazing. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. In a mere 30 minutes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready, are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. I feel like each of your books is full of like life lessons. And I've been thinking about that with this podcast because I feel like sometimes you want to walk away with something. The lessons from Maury are riveting. The lessons from your own life are blowing my mind. Mm. Um, is there some a lesson from your mom maybe that stood out from another book or is there? From my mom? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. My mom said, uh, my mom gave me two great pieces of advice. One the masses are asses. That's what he used to say all the time. And, she, and, and I never knew when I was younger that I would be in a, in a life where I would ever be concerned with masses, yeah. you know. Uh, but it's grown into that. And, and, you know, that when times when people criticize you or you, whatever, yeah. or just, you know, when you analyze the world, and wow, so many people are, are you know, Snapchatting or whatever. And you realize eh, the masses are asses. So I never forgot that one. And the other one she said is, listen, you're going to be lucky if you have one or two good friends in your mm. life. And if you're really lucky, you'll marry the one of them. And mm. I did. Mm. And she did and I did. Yeah, those are the two best things. You got wise people in your life, I huh? Did. Can you even believe that? I, I am a sieve for the wisdom of other people and <sighs> older people. The one thing that I don't know where it came from in my mm. life, but I'm very, very, very grateful that it did, mm. is that even when I was a little boy, I was interested in older people. Huh. And a lot of my, you know, my, my friends, cousins, brother, sister, at the Thanksgiving table after the meal was done, you know, and, and there were older the uncles and aunts, the old country, they'd all be sitting mm -hmm. around. They, my, all the other kids bolted. They just bolted from, can we go now? You know, can we go? You know, and then they went by. 
I would sit at the table and just listen to them tell their stories. And people ask me about, you know, well, where'd you learn how to write? What school did you go to? I said, I didn't go to any school to write. I learned how to write at the dinner table and wow. at the Thanksgiving table, just listening to my relatives tell stories mm -hmm. and watching how they would, who got to command the floor. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like if I had an old aunt who was stuck on the details, like it was 1944. <laughs> no, wait, it was 1945. Maybe it was 44. Ah, shut up. And they move off to somebody else. <laughs> then I had my uncle Eddie and he'd say, so there we were, we were coming over the hill, see? And they were shooting at us. And I said to my buddy, Dad, look at them, they're over there. And he's like, you're riveted. You say, wow, that's how you tell a story. Right, right. He ended up becoming the Eddie of the five people you meet in heaven. Oh. That's who he was. Yeah. And so uh, I, I always listened to older people uh -huh. and liked it. And if you look at my life as it's turned out in my books, mm -hmm. there's Maury in Have a Little Faith. There's, mm -hmm. there's uh, mm -hmm. you know, Rabbi Lewis and, and Henry Covington. Rabbi mm -hmm. Lewis was in his 90s. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then it kind of came full circle with Chica because I was now the older one, mm -hmm. and I was listening to a, a five-year-old and a six-year-old. And by the way, you can learn just as much from a five-year-old, a six-year-old, as you can from a 50 and 60-year-old. And um, I just like absorbing the wisdom of other people and seeing if I can share it with the people that I write for. I mean, I feel like you live your life of service, and I only know this because, you know, I Because I'm know. always hitting you up for charitable things. No, you know things. what it is? You're never, like you said, you never ask for anything for yourself. Huh. Never, never, never. But your charity in Detroit, for the kids in Detroit, the homeless kids in Detroit, I hear your passion on the radio talking yeah. about them. And I asked this of my friend, Maria Schreiber is a good friend of mine, and, I, and she's very much of service. And I said to her, how did you, how did this come to be? And she said, well, you know, my mom, you know, started the Special Olympics and my dad started the Peace Corps. She said they never once mentioned the word service. Hmm. They just did it. I watched them do it. And I never thought anything other than, oh, this is, this is what we do. Yeah. It, did, it, wasn't, it wasn't taught that way. But I was just curious because your life is so full of that. Yeah. Um, was it taught? Was it just something that came? Like, you know. um, it wasn't taught on, yeah. a, uh, on a program kind of let's yeah. go do this charity level. No. It was taught by my parents and the way that they treated everybody around they them. They did, yeah. And uh, when there were, when they had friends that I later discovered, you know, hit financial troubles, they helped take care uh. of them. And they weren't, they didn't have money themselves, but they, they, they helped, helped take care of them. And uh, when, when uh, relatives got, you know, sick or had a heart attack, they let them move in. And, you know, I, I, their whole life was just taken care of. My, hmm. my dad, when he was 16, my mother was 15. She, her father died of a heart attack right in front of her, just feel, oh. keeled over and died, 15. And he moved in when he was 16. It was her first boyfriend, first girlfriend. And he moved into the house, basically. He didn't sleep there, but he came over every single day and took care of the household because my grandmother was, you know, she was out yeah. of it. You know, she was in shock. And he helped raise my uncle, her, my mom's younger brother. And I said to him, you were 16. Yeah, kid. Like, I was 16. I was, yeah. You know, all I wanted to do was, was play in a little rock and roll band and ride my bicycle yeah. to my girlfriend's house. And he was, like, you know, cooking and, yeah. and, and helping to pay the bills and all that. And I realized, like, it's in his DNA, and it's in the two of their DNAs uh, to help other people wherever they see. I just... I had an opportunity to do it on a, on a somewhat of a larger stage yeah. because I would, you know, I had these chances, I had these 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 opportunities. But, but um, I, I do think it comes from um, it just comes from the good feeling that you mm -hmm. get from doing it. Mm -hmm. Giving is living, you know. I, I know Maria right. a little bit, yeah. and you know, I, I think she feels the same way that that um, you've seen, especially someone like Maria. You know, she's mm -hmm. seen the alternative. Yeah. She's seen what it's like to have mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't give you that same sense mm -mm. of satisfaction. It doesn't... I'm never happier than when I sleep in Haiti on a, on a four-inch mattress, mm. you know, uh, and I, I don't ever set an alarm clock because I wake up at quarter to six in the morning with kids screaming and squealing <laughs> outside the window. And I think... And it's, it's hot and mm -hmm. it's uncomfortable mm -hmm. and the, so now you're not using nice sheets yeah. and all, you know, there's no hot water and there's, you know, you're thinking already, well, I can never take a shower until this yeah. point. And none of that stuff matters, you know, mm -hmm. it's just that you're there, you know, you're needed. Mm. And knowing that you're needed is the most satisfying, I think, 
um, interaction of the human emotions to, mm. to help someone who is in need makes you calm in a way that grabbing things to make yourself mm -hmm. richer or bigger never will. And just, just um, I don't want to end with any life advice because you've given us such great advice, but um, is there something that you've, that, that you've kind of been carrying with you? Is there a, a, a little piece we can just kind of, kind of put a button on this? And I'm going to, again, remind people that the book is called The Stranger in the Lifeboat. It's out in November. November 2nd. Right? Yeah. And everyone's been a bestseller. Half of them are movies. It's crazy. Do you ever go like, uh-oh, is this going to be a bestseller, or do you just put it out in the universe and uh, come the, what may? The, day, the times for uh-oh are, are long oh, past me. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I'm just looking for the energy at this point. Oh, no, I like no uh-ohs. I like the attitude. Yeah. I like it. Um, I don't know. I, I, I just find as I get older that um, the only thing that really um, energizes me the way that when I was younger everything seemed to is children. Hmm. And I think as we become more disillusioned with how we as adults are behaving, mm -hmm. we look to children. And I see this in you. You know, when we talk all the time, I mm -hmm. see this in you, you know, uh, when you talk about your children, mm. it's not just a mother's pride in the children. It's like hope. Yeah. It's like hope. Yeah. Uh, you you see your yeah. position enables you to see everything. And, and you, you always keep a great smile on, but you've seen plenty of ugliness. Mm -hmm. You've seen plenty of bad behavior by people and you report on it and you're talking about it. And then these kids come along and they're so pure and they're, they're, they're just they're just filled with all the goodness mm -hmm. that we have somehow tarnished as we've gotten older or stained or put aside for mm -hmm. other things. And you just see in them, maybe if I can guide them correctly, they won't make the mistakes that I made mm. and they'll, they'll keep this joy. They'll keep this mm. passion for life. And, 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 and you show me your daughter with a, a lollipop, you know, like <laughs> a lollipop is going to be, you know, or, 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 or Bianca, who you just yeah. met before, she came to New York City with all the buildings and all that, and she wanted to catch a pigeon. That's all she <laughs> wanted to do was hold the pigeon. I had to tell her, pigeons are poison. They're rats with wings. What are you doing? And she just wanted to hold a pigeon. But you want that to yeah. keep that, yes. you know? You just yes. want to hold on to that. And, yes. and at the, the, so anybody who's feeling a little, a little down or a little blue mm -hmm. about the world or depressed about the way we're going at each mm -hmm. other's throats in this country, find a child mm -hmm. that needs help and just spend time with it and you yeah. will be renewed because that's that's nature or God's way of, of just reminding us we we were like that once and uh, there's great goodness and kindness inside every child's heart. If we can just hang on to it, we can learn a lot from them. Mitch Alba. Mitch, thank you. Thank you for sure. sitting with me. It was beautiful. Thanks for Thank inviting you. me. My pleasure. All good? I want to cry for an hour. I You're need to a go natural at this. No, I need to go home. <laughs> I need to... Oh, uh, no. Oh, my God. You just make this yeah. little two shot. Here. Okay. Yeah, you're, you're oh making me cry God. a couple of times. So oh. you see tears in your eyes, Oof. and then I start crying. It's very it's, infectious. By the way, it's so beautiful what you're, uh, what you're doing, and these kids, yeah. man. They're great. Oh, my gosh. I sent you that latest picture yeah. in front of the purple love, wall. Love, love, love all of it. So many of it's them. like, yeah. So how do you like how how does your like your life work out in, like over a month? You go to Haiti for part of it. You come home. Yeah. Like how do you? I go to Haiti for uh, usually at least one week of the month. Right. And I go every month. Mm -hmm. Then you know I'm back. I, I'm on the phone with them every right. single day. Of course. You know, and, you know, managing things. And I don't oversee the whole operation, but we have some yeah. good people, good volunteers. Right. And, um, you know, we're trying to, the main thing now is we're trying to get to a new place because we're in, a, for 12 years, we've been, well, the place itself is, yeah. goes back 30 years. It's, it's, we're in the ghetto. Yeah. And we have like a third of an acre. We don't have a blade of grass. Everything yeah. is busted up concrete. So I'm trying to get us to a new, N a new spot. place. That's my big goal okay. is to get a new good. thing. But, uh, um, yeah, I just do the other stuff in between. I, I get up in the morning, I sit I sit outside my little, mm -hmm. I sleep right there mm -hmm. with the kids. I just sit outside at the picnic table and I write my books and they come over and they sit in my lap and they lean against me and I have to, half the time, you know, I, I'm writing left-handed because they're <laughs> over here. And like, but I can concentrate down there for whatever you reason. You can, yeah. wow. And uh, yeah. then when I come home here, I take care of the... Mm -hmm. The business part of life, yeah. and and uh, and the Detroit stuff, which yeah. is very. There's a lot of it. You know, I'm not I'm not one on one with the, yeah. the kids in Detroit like I am. 
yeah. uh, here, but there's a lot of charities in Detroit. And then, then I'm back there again, and it's it's like a great balance, you know? Whenever mm -hmm. things just start to feel too American, for want of a better word, like, yeah. you know, uh, politics, yeah. Fox News, yeah. you know, all the stuff yeah. that, you know, I just disappear Back and I go up. to a place where there's no I mean there's no internet there's no phones there's mm. no there's no computers there's no television so it's pure it's pure childhood yeah. you know yeah. it's poor children you know these kids will they'll take your arm and put it around them mm. because nobody taught them that it's not cool because we don't have cool we're all a bunch of nerds <laughs> you know like there's no cool we have no mirrors there nobody wow. even looks at their reflection you know they're just wow yeah. wow Joe Fryer in for Carson as you hang with us on Today All Day. It's a terrific Tuesday for Pop Star Plus, and we have a packed show for you. Savannah has a fun conversation with the country stars of Lady A, and attention office fans, Brian Baumgartner, who played lovable Kevin, will update us on a new book all about the show's history. Plus, Riverdale star Madeleine Patch gives us a peek into the show's latest season. But first, here's your pop star. First up, Harry Potter. Brace yourselves for this one. Today marks the 20th anniversary for, since the first Harry Potter film was released here in the United States. Since then, it's become one of the world's biggest film franchises. NBC's Matt Bradley is in London, where he's gone on a quest looking for magic. Good morning, Matt. Hey, good morning, guys. So I'm here in London, and, you know, here the magic really feels like it's everywhere. It feels like Harry Potter happened just yesterday. So this is Leadenhall Market. So, uh, you know, of course, the real Potter heads, the true fanboys and fangirls, they're going to recognize this immediately as the place where Harry and Hagrid went shopping for wands in that first film 20 years ago. Even if you believe in magic... Very curious. You might not believe it's been 20 years since the first Harry Potter film brought it to life. Happy birthday! And convinced millions of muggles that they can be wizards too. On TikTok, hashtag Harry Potter has over 80 billion views. The franchise inspiring theme parks, plays, stores, and shows in the US. But here in Britain, the magic is rising again, like a phoenix. There's a wand installation in Leicester Square, a new behind the scenes photo exhibit and a bar just for butterbeer. Cheers. So I went on my own quest, searching for the Chamber of Secrets and an exclusive look on set. You know, it's been 20 years, but Diagon Alley looks just the same. At the Warner Brothers studio tour, the magic looks real, cause it kind of is. Including a real working train and 300 paintings made by hand. 
So this is like legitimately scary, I think, yes, this part this right here. <laughs> is the Forbidden Forest, okay. where no student is really allowed to go. Right, except Harry Potter when he's breaking the rules, obviously. obviously. Rianne loves the series so much, she made wizarding her full-time work. It's still a job for you, right? But the magic is still kind of there. Yeah, yeah. And I, I still love the films. I go back and rewatch them. So let's head over to the dormitory. Okay. It's one of my personal favorites. All right. <laughs> they had to create this whole magical world. For these child actors, and the best way to get an authentic reaction and acting on screen is to make it as real as you possibly can. That's why it seems like it lasts 20 years, because everything was so detail-oriented, made to last, essentially, it seems. Yeah. Details like the tiniest flick of the wrist. And action! <laughs> okay, it was okay. <laughs> I decided to test my own magic with the film's official wand choreographer, Paul Harris. Okay, ready? And position one, action! Huh. Position three, huh. position five, behind the back. Oh, that was pretty good, actually. I feel like I nailed it. Now, after 20 years of wizarding wonder, the film's casting their spell on a new generation. There you go. <laughs> Expelliarmus. So Harry, I know you were super impressed with my wand skills, but there's a reason why I was practicing and studying so hard with all of that wanding, and that's because there's supposedly rumors, just rumors right now, that there could be a 20th anniversary reunion with all the actors this year. Now, not all the actors are available, or could be available, but I'm available. You know? oh, yeah. <laughs> I think I could step up and audition okay. and, you know. It's a BYOW totally event. School. Bring your own wand. Bring your own wand. All right, Matt. Thank you very much. Coming up next. Bring your own magic, guys. Yeah. Gotcha. Coming up next, Ghostbusters. Ooh. You've heard. Break out the proton packs. The Ghostbusters are back on Monday. Dan Aykroyd, Ernie Hudson, and Bill Murray stopped by The Tonight Show and revealed what it was like to suit up for the first time in more than three decades in the franchise's latest sequel, Ghostbusters Afterlife. I will say, when I, I got in the suit and Bill and Dan and seeing Sigourney, it was, it was almost spiritual, man. I, I was almost in tears. It Do you was know, great. Uh, what was it like putting the suit back on, Bill? Did you go, well? It hurt. And oh, was, my gosh. You had shockwaves of memory from it. You went, oh, God, this is horrible. Because it was really a very, very long days, and it was a very heavy thing. It's not as heavy as the original was, but we're weaker. So it's about the same. <laughs> <laughs> Sigourney, Sigourney Weaver, yes, remember? Yeah, of oh course. my gosh. Wow. You're going to see how the guys held up soon. Ghostbusters Afterlife hits theaters this Friday. That was today's news. Don't go anywhere because Savannah's sharing a great conversation with Lady A. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's news. Let's go. We're going to kick off the Pink Power and Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Oh. What's the best thing about being this age? You have nothing to prove, because you already proved it. What does it feel like to be in a city that you love so much? I am humbly proud that I stuck up for my town. We all have the honor of helping reopen the doors. Broadway is back! Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. This is fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Cooking up a storm with Al Roker, a Thanksgiving feast and a podcast. Listen now. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Pop Start Plus. Savannah loves a rapid fire interview, thus her six minute marathon series and her next guest, Lady A. The country group sat down with SG to chat about a lot of stuff, including the most random items on their tour bus. Check it out. Hello, Lady A. Hi. Uh, how are you? You know, I heart you. Uh. <laughs> heart.
This is your first time on the six minute marathon. It is. Let's make it sweep the nation. All you have to do is answer as many questions as quickly as possible in six minutes. Wow. And I love we, a competition. I know. Do we get a, we, we talk get a, a lot. So that would be, it, it might not be that many questions. I'll keep either. it concise. Here we go. We'll start the clock. What movie makes you laugh no matter how often you watch it? Christmas Vacation. I was going to say Elf. Oh. Wait, what was Charles? I didn't hear his. Uh, Step Brothers. Okay. What is your favorite and least favorite thing about social media? I love seeing friends you haven't seen in a while. I love puppy videos, and I don't like mean people. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's a good answer. You could say cosine. Oh, okay. If someone narrated your life, who would you want to be the narrator? Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Agree with that. For oh, sure. gosh. Robert Redford, maybe. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. I'd say Cardi B. Cardi B. <laughs> <laughs> what is a random item you guys keep on the tour bus? I crochet. So, crochet needle and yarn. I guess a random <laughs> item. We still have these DVDs in there from like years ago. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, you know, no one uses it. I don't even know if there's even a DVD player on there, there anymore. There might not be. But, They're yeah. in the drawers. They make good posters now. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I don't know. I love having like a good breakfast. I always keep these frozen acai packets and stuff. So that's kind of random. <laughs> Very healthy. That's yeah. not what I thought. I thought tour buses were all about booze and. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, after, after, that's afternoon, not random. Afternoon they are. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say, it turns out it's just acai. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I actually thought was pronounced acai until like a month ago. I didn't know that's how you said that. In one word, what is the secret to your success? Authenticity. Ooh. Camaraderie. Yeah. Ditto. <laughs> <laughs> Ditto. Have any of y'all ever been mistaken for another celebrity? And if so, oh my God. I, I get Eric Church all the time. I was getting my oil changed about a year ago, and the guy at Valvoline was like, man, I love, uh, you know, and started listening off the last couple of Eric Church records. <laughs> and I couldn't correct him, Savannah. I felt so embarrassed. <laughs> so he, I just drove off and he thought he had Eric Church. <laughs> He's like, guess who I met today? Uh, Did he see the bill afterwards though, where Dave Haywood yeah. signed? I was wearing glass sunglasses. Maybe it just all yeah. it just looked like Eric. I guess so. That's hilarious. He knew you were famous. What is something that you've always wanted to do but haven't checked off the bucket list? Go to Japan for me. Oh, that's. I would agree. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Play in Japan. Play in Japan. Yeah. Well, you guys all agree. Let's go Japan next. Oh, no. What is a song that someone else wrote that you wish you had written? Oh, there's so many. I can't make you love me. Yeah. Bonnie and Ray. How to build me for me. I'd say Fire and Rain, James Taylor. Nice. Fire and Rain. I would say, not that anyone asked me, Hallelujah. Oh. Ooh, wow. oh that's a good yes. one. Wow. Great one. I feel like that's one that we all wish we had written. Uh -huh. If you could have a superpower, what would it be? Teleportation. Um, so I could get home fast, to the show fast, anywhere I want that. As, since we're doing miracles, teleportation for three. So y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you were arrested with no explanation, what would your family and friends think you had done? <laughs> Charles. Ran a red uh, light. Public intoxication. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's an easy answer. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, that's one of our better questions. That's the first one. I've never asked that one before. <laughs> What TV or movie reboot would you like to see happen? Oh, Step um, Brothers 2. I would love to see um, more Newsroom. Oh, you like the Newsy shows. Jeff Daniels in Newsroom, though. I'm like, dang, he's so good. I agree with that. Yeah. I agree with that. If you were stuck on a desert island but could only bring one kind of food, what kind of food would it be? I know, acai for Dave. Acai packets, for sure. How would you keep them frozen? Yeah, I don't know how you keep Man, them frozen, though. This is so tough. Um, it either be Mexican food or sushi. Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Yeah. That's the, the only thing you want? I could eat one every day. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. I, I didn't know this about Hillary. I didn't either. <laughs> yeah. She's a woman of simple tastes. Yes. <laughs> what is the best compliment you've ever received? Maybe that that I'm genuine. That means a lot. Yeah, I mean, when people say that, you know, our, our, your music got me through a hard time, it's kind of the ultimate. It's just kind of what we feel like we're trying to do here yeah. is, is connect and, and help people. Someone said I was more handsome than Brad Pitt, which I thought was a little insane, 
but I appreciated it. No, <laughs> if I had a nickel every time. If I, I had a nickel every time somebody mistaken me for Brad Pitt. What has been your biggest professional accomplishment? Being a member of the Grand Ole Opry's up there. Yes. Grammys. Um, mm -hmm. Being in a healthy band 15 years later. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> oh. Oh. It's true. And you still love each other. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That's the win. Okay, here's the last one. I think it's a hard one. What is your favorite song to perform live? But it changes. I think it depends. But right now, like, what a song can do really is kind of like, just feels really good and feels so familiar already. It was the name of the tour. Yeah, mm -hmm. but um, it, it never it, it never gets old performing Need You Now. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, even the beginning of Need You Now is so fun. Every just time. The piano before. stuff. Yeah. People go nuts. It's I awesome. run to you too. It, like, that one was our first number one at Country Radio. And lyrically, I think it means more to us now than it did even when we wrote it. You know what's fun about that? You guys all chose kind of from different yeah. eras, you know, beginning, middle, yeah. end, beginning of your success. Need yep. you now, this just absolute massive crossover hit, and now your new song, What a Song Can Do. We gotta promote the new record. This was all part of a, this was all part of a bigger scheme. We've been practicing for about an hour before you got on. Yeah. Do you know how I feel about you? You got me through everything. I just adore you, and it's really an honor to have you on the show. Thank, Thank you. you. We love you too. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Thanks, guys. We'll have a conversation you don't want to miss right here on Pop Start Plus. Catherine Schwarzenegger Pratt, I mean, come on. I know <laughs> you have so many lanes, but you've been big in a certain lane in this moment, haven't you? Yes, yeah. I have. I'm so excited to be here to talk about it. Well, okay, the forgiveness lane, but I wanted this is the quote that you love, and this is this is right on point. And this is your your quote is by Oprah. And this is the quote that you love. Forgiveness is giving up the hope that the past could be any different. It's accepting the past for what it was and using this moment and this time to help yourself move forward. Um, tell me why that, that resonated with you. Well, throughout my book, um, I did a series of quotes at the top of every person's section and chapter, and it's a collection of different people's interviews that I've done um, all about their experiences with forgiveness, their challenges, and their struggles with it. And I was able to come across so many incredible different quotes for this book that pertain to forgiveness, and I thought that one spoke really truly to just my overall conclusions on the mm. topic of forgiveness and how challenging it can be to release what has happened in your life and be able to move forward. And I think it speaks to the complexities of forgiveness and also this really confusing part of forgiveness, which is that if we forgive and move on, that it feels like a betrayal of our mm -hmm. own hurt and the pain that we experienced. Mm 